Hey, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your girl, No Mercy here. It's Tuesday night, so you already know what time it is. It's time for No Punches Pulled with me, No Mercy. Some of you probably already know who I am. For those of you that are new and don't, my name is Brooke Milbrook, formerly known as Brooke No Mercy Deerdorf in the boxing game. I am a retired professional boxer. I held the WBC lightweight title until I retired. And I was inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame in 2022. Uh, I've been through some good, some bad, and of course, a lot of BS in the sport of women's boxing. Welcome to my platform. This is where we talk the talk and we walk the walk. We, got, we will be um, talking with past boxers, current boxers, future boxers, young boxers, all the above in the sport of women's boxing. We do get down and dirty here and we speak the truth of what takes place behind the scenes in women's boxing, things that people don't know. You definitely don't want to miss one single episode. So please make sure that you like, subscribe and share the episodes. You don't want to miss live here Tuesday night with me every week. But today, y'all, I'm super, super excited um, with the guests that we have on today. Hopefully you guys saw the posts. Um, but today we're sitting down to hear the amazing journey of an amazing fighter, an amazing person uh, that came from the same era, a little bit after me, but at the same time as me. Um, I consider her to be one of my boxing sisters. She definitely continues to amaze me with her grit, determination, and drive to accomplish all of her goals in life, even after boxing, even after retirement. Uh, she is the former three-time WBO female Bantamweight champ and the IFBA Super Bantamweight world champ. She was the first world champion from the Inland, Inland Empire and was also a contestant on CW reality show Capture, placing fourth out of 12 teams total. She's always been a very, very big voice campaigning and protesting across the U.S. for equality for women in sports. Please help me welcome Kalisa West to the show. What's up, hey. champ? What's up, champ? Oh my gosh, you said everything right there. I was you just give me all kind of flashbacks left and right. I was like, wow. <laughs> it really I kind of break it down. Give them a little oh, preview. Was, a little preview. Right. I was like, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh yeah. Oh wait, I did do that. I did do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That oh was man. Good. So yeah, I've been patiently waiting. I told you before, but yeah, I've been patiently waiting to have you on the show. Super excited. Um, loved your boxing career. I just love your attitude, your demeanor, and everything about you the most. Um, I think yeah. we're so similar in so many ways. I think that's kind of yeah. why, even after we met, like I continue to follow your career, um, your life even after boxing. Um, you're just so determined in everything that you do, and I just love that. And your just your attitude. I love your attitude. I, I think you're hilarious. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, it's funny too that you're saying your determination, your determination, your drive, because my I was the stubborn one in the family. And I, I'm ne I was always good, but not great in things that I did. I was decent and mediocre, but because of how stubborn I was, I've always been able to just, you know, excel, succeed, or go to the top of whatever it is that I'm doing. Yeah. So in boxing, I I'll never forget when I first started boxing when I was 10 years old, I used to be afraid to hit the girls in their faces. So I'd hit them in, in their chest area just because I was tough, but I was like, oh, how do I do this? Am I really gonna hit him in the face? So I used to get made fun of, oh my gosh, you're you're fighting Shadow Boxer, you fighting Casper. And I wasn't good. I wasn't like that natural, crazy, you know, boxer yeah. that comes off the streets. And then, but I was just always so determined to be the best, be the best, be per I was, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. And everything I do, I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. And I just I just kept going, you know, even when it was really hard, I just kept going. Yeah, I, can I, don't definitely. I don't believe in, I don't believe in, uh, I don't, I just don't believe in not finishing something that you're doing. Like, it, yeah. I don't care if a leg break, figure out how you're going to do it. You know, yeah. if something happened crazy, figure out how you're going to succeed in that sport or in whatever it is that you do, whatever yeah. it is you want to do, you know? Yeah. So, just don't give up and don't quit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I do know, uh, like you just stated officially, you started boxing at the age of 10. Um, take us back though. Tell us a little bit about your childhood, your dad, like your dad was a boxer and what really led you to decide at such a young age that you wanted to box? You know, 
my dad, he was my superhero because he was so funny and he was so outgoing and everybody loved him. He has so much charisma. So you can imagine as a young girl, if you're doing a match for hero, it was like, like I want to make daddy proud. I want to make, I want to, I want to do something that has life and we could be buddies. We could be best friends. Yeah. So when he was a boxer, I, I used to back in Riverside, um, way, way back, back in the day when a lot, a lot of great Roy Jones, even, and then. And I want to say it was like ten. It was around my tenth birthday. I, I remember. I really did. Like I wanted to get in there. I wanted to be a part of. I was sick of watching. And he, he's like, "You don't want to box." All the fighters used to meet at our house because he was coach. And I used to have to run out of the driveway with my gloves and my hand wraps as a little girl to dad and he'd be like he would stop the car and be like you, sure, you want, want to go today okay i thought you were the casting things like he just didn't, didn't take me serious when i was that little it was just like box and, and that was it you, you know and, and then I, I kept going to the gym going to the first sparring session with the boy and I just remember I did, I remember I was like, I'm just going to do it a one and a two. <laughs> and I just did a one, two, one, two. I was catching the the guy in the, you know, in the round. So when I was little, I was catching him with the one, two. I was so surprised. He was like, okay, you have some natural skill. And, Can you, and so um. Can you hit do a refresh on your screen? You're cutting out a little bit. Oh yeah. <clears throat> All right, bear with me guys. She was, I wanna fix the connection. Have her come back in and see if we fix the audio. There we go. Is it better I disconnected from Wi-Fi? It is better. Right now, anyway, it's better. Okay. Yeah, I, I disconnected from Wi-Fi. Sometimes okay. it gets a little bad, spotty out here in the country. I feel you. Um, so, yeah, but you, you were going in and out, so I want to make sure people could understand you. I could figure out what you were saying. It was just delayed and cutting in and out. But you're good. Go ahead. You can continue. Okay. Yeah, no, all I, I was saying was that who was always chasing the car when they would leave and all the fighters would get in the car and leave with my dad because he was coach i was always the tag along while he was focused on his other fighters all of his guys he, i was just the one that was kind of like i want to go too let me go too and it was not like one of those come on get in the car come on get in the you know get on the um get in the track go run this it didn't get like that until i want to say about 13. it was okay. it's about it's about 13, 12 years old was like testing the waters. And he used to say that all the time. I'm going to throw you in there with so-and-so. I'm going to put you in this tournament. I'm going to make you spar so-and-so. It was like he was, you know, testing, testing. the waters. Yeah. Exactly. And then he was just like, this girl don't, she don't quit. She keeps going. Okay, she's serious. Yeah. So he started, he started putting me in on like bigger tournaments, like the blue and gold, boxes for Christ, Gene Lewis, Golden Gloves uh you know uh, junior olympics usa's international women's i mean every single amateur tournament you could think of i've been on that scale yeah. weighing in you know fighting or whatever what have you i've always been present there was like a it was like i was coach's daughter so sometimes you know paulo was missing because he was playing football or anthony was busy because he was hanging out but kalisha was always there there was no excuse for me Cause I'm yeah. coach's daughter, you know? So right. it, it wasn't even, I'll be honest with you. It wasn't even until I was 26 years old when I finally had like consistent, like I want to say three months off from the age of 10 yeah, all the way up till 26 years old. I knew nothing but the gym. I didn't go to prom. I didn't do a winter formal. I had no boyfriends. I had no outings. 
it was everything I did was like, oh, well, since you're really doing this, you can get hurt. We're going to really do this and we ain't going to play around. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Um, and, and like some like some people say, oh, you, you don't want to be too hard on them. And I'll be honest with you. I, I mean, you don't you don't want to burn somebody out, but it takes I mean, this is just my opinion is it does take some type of inhuman type of way about going about things. Yeah. If if you really want to be want to be great at anything that you're doing, if you hear the backstory for the Williams sisters, Tiger Woods, you know, if you hear those backstories, there was no, oh, it's Christmas. I'm going to take this week off. Oh, it's my best friend's wedding. I mean, you, you miss out on life yeah. when you're in something in, in a sport where you have to yeah. be top tier. So that's basically how my whole you know life and career was it was non-stop i mean i the most i get off is a week or two for the for christmas holidays you know or a weekend you know yeah. and then living living with my dad it was like even when it was my birthday and i have some birthday cake he'll be like so now you know you ate that cake you know you gotta run three miles tomorrow right you know like, yeah. i couldn't even i couldn't even cheat if well, I and he's to. a coach and he's always yes. in the gym so you're always in the gym Oh, I'm always in the gym. I was, yes. always, I was always weighing in. I was always on my diet. I was always, you know, looked at under a microscope because I yeah. lived with coach. Yeah. So I, t and I, and I tell a lot of little girls that I meet who ask me, why did you box? You know, there's, there's some girls that are like, what? You're so nice. Oh my gosh. I would have never seen you boxing. And I say, you know, I boxed because I was, I was born into it. You know, yeah. you you see in the movie Gladiator, you see the yeah. little boy how they throw they throw dirt on his face, dirt on his face, dirt on, and he grow up a monster. I, yeah. I honestly, I like to compare my yeah. life to that. I was That's I was true. raised, I was raised screaming at my dad, four years old. Come on, dad, punch yeah. him. I was raised watching my pops. I was raising him as a coach. I raised into boxing. I was just raised into it. But I'm so 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 grateful because there's no way that I would be as successful, as great outside of the ring as I am today. Yeah. If it, if it weren't for boxing and it taught me self-defense, it taught me confidence. It taught me so much. And now that I'm, you know, older, I look back at, at what I did and I was like, like I tell my husband, I'm like, I was pretty damn amazing. I just never, I, you don't give yourself no, you don't give yourself no, I don't, yeah. I never did. Either. And even today, like looking back, I'm just like, yeah, I guess, I guess I actually did do that. I mean, but it it's different. Like, I'm, I'm easy to give other people props for, like, accomplishments, but not so much myself. Because I I always feel like I could have did more, too. Yep, absolutely. Me, too. So, I wanted that fight with, with Anna Marie Torres so bad. I wanted that fight with Jackie Nava so bad. And it was like every time the stars, it just wouldn't align. You know what I mean? They just... For one reason or another, it just, she was, Jackie was pregnant. Anna Marie was uh, set up on a contract. It just, something happened where the stars went aligned. And then, yeah. you know, it just didn't happen. And, yeah. and I, even though I've been in there in the ring with people who've been in the ring with these champions and yeah. I did amazing with these people. So it goes to show what would happen. Right. We're still, we're so, I'm, I am my biggest critic and, yeah. and, I wish I wasn't, I wish I wasn't like that looking back because I didn't give myself as much credit as I should have looking back at everything. And, you know, but the girls who I've been in the ring with, they know what they felt and they always will reach out randomly and tell me, yeah. you know, damn, you were, you were, you know, amazing. You were yeah. so, you were one of my hardest fights. You were so damn fast. I couldn't see the damn punch when, but it hit me you know the yeah. things that they'd say and they would make me feel like man i i was huh like you know oh man yeah, yeah you know, looking really back were. and you know outside of what a, a record is and outside of 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 what who you fought being a professional a professional athlete that alone yeah. it, that alone it just take it take your hat off yeah. you know what i mean it takes respect. a lot a respect. lot Yep, and I, yeah, I used absolutely. to, I used to, I used to work in the emergency room. I used to always work in a hospital while I was boxing, and I remember the doctors. A lot of the big doctors would would go, "Wow, so nice to meet you." And you know, I was young, eighteen, nineteen, and yeah. I'd be like, 
wow, a doctor wants to meet me. And then, you know, they would say things like, you know, it's, it's remarkable. Wow. That you are able to just dedicate yourself to make that weight and, and, and train and every day. And they were so impressed. And I'm like, I get it now. Yeah, I get now. it now. <laughs> now you get it. Yeah. But oh, not yeah, in the moment. So in the moment, great. you're just like, why are you wanting to talk to me? Like what? It I'm is, just, a, not, I'm just work here. <laughs> just work and here. it's, it's so freaking easy. I mean, I'm spoiled now. I spoil myself now. And it is so easy to just say, give me that chocolate cake. It is so easy to say, I want some fried chicken tonight. It is so easy to say, you know what? Oh, I'm a little too sore. I'm not going to go to the gym tomorrow. And back when I thought that was not a thing for me. No. I was numb. I used to tell people I was a, I was a machine. Yeah. I didn't, oh, I, you have pain. You have soreness. You have a, a, oh, you're sick. Oh, you're coughing. Oh, you threw up last night. Get your ass in the gym. That was my lifestyle. And that yeah. was normal. <laughs> right. That was it. I mean, you normal. just did it. You we didn't have a choice. Yeah. Exactly. We didn't have a choice. Exactly. So I look back and I'm like, you know what? I, I was, I was pretty damn amazing you know and you are pretty damn amazing i agree totally agree <laughs> thank you thank you uh, i do know we start, start talking about it but talking about some of your your amateur days talking about your amateur days you did start competing oh, yeah. finally after convincing your dad um to really take you seriously let you actually compete because i know he was a little resistant at first um mm -hmm. trying to deter you but you did accumulate a record of 98 wins only 10 losses as an amateur talking mm -hmm. about it's going to take me a minute for this one, y'all, so bear with me. She racked up a very long list of titles and accomplishments in the amateurs. Um, 2000, so oh, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004, junior Olympic champion. Uh, 03, 04, 05, silver gloves champ. 2002, 125-pound national golden glove champ. 2004, USA champ. 2005, blue and gold champ. And 2005, pal champ. Did I get them mm -hmm. all? Yep. Okay. Yeah. And the, the Junior Olympics were in there. I just, that was, I won the Junior Olympics when I was 16. But it yeah, was J.O. 304? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was 16 when I won the, because uh, they didn't let me go when I was 12 to to um, regionals. They only let you go to district. So I won district Junior Olympics. And so, and then USA Women's, um, I had fought and I got a, a uh, silver medal, but uh, man, I, 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 I don't know. I feel like I won. <laughs> you know, I, I had a few of those uh, fights in the amateur. I, think, I uh, think we all do. I think we all yeah, do. Yeah, we all, definitely oh, all do. Well, walk us through some of your most memorable fights um, from your amateur career. Like what's some of your most memorable fights or most special belts that you got? Or titles you know you what it would, have to be, it would have to be the golden gloves and this is why i was set up to fight emily kleinfelter i know you're familiar with who emily kleinfelter Barry, i fought katie i don't know if i fought em i think i fought katie kleinfelter katie katie was the older sister yeah and and their and emily's husband was the coach and it was katie and emily kleinfelter yeah. and in the, in the nationals the, yeah yeah you fought you fought the bigger one katie was the bigger okay. sister yeah. Okay, yeah. And I, uh, Emily was the smaller one. Um, she was 118. And okay, yeah, no, I, that wasn't me. I remember, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She was 118. I remember when um, I was, I was in the uh, Golden Gloves and we knew that we were scheduled to fight uh, Emily. Like I want to say on, um, in the, on the first day, cause you know, it's, it's a week long. And yeah. then when we were we were told by the commission to come back on Friday in finals that that I got a buy for Wednesday that I wouldn't have to fight Wednesday and that I would end up just having to fight Friday and she her name got drawn to fight on Wednesday so she would have to fight twice I would have had to fight her in the finals I got a buy and um we came on Thursday to you know just to like see the fights and they said oh where were you and we we're like what they were like where were you yesterday yesterday yeah your name was on the schedule you were supposed to fight yesterday and and my dad we had flown on my dad's dollar no sponsors all the way to chicago to to for this tournament for me and my dad was like oh hell no 
you guys told me da da da, and we we were expected to fight Friday. What are you talking about Wednesday? Why are y'all pulling this on me? And back then, you know, my dad was always like, "Oh, y'all being political because y'all want Emily to win." And we don't. I mean, I don't know what it was. We don't know the truth. But that's just my dad. And and so th- they said, "Look, we're gonna ask Emily if she's okay with taking the fight with you Friday, and and if she's a." I know, look, look where this is going. And and that she's okay with accepting you, but but you would not win the title if you win because you were disqualified, but it would you wouldn't have flown all the way out here for nothing. So it was called a uh they call it like a um exhibition. And and my dad was like, Well, I, well, I'm out here just I just want the experience. I don't care anymore at this point. So they went up to Emily Kleinfelter. And her husband, now it wasn't her husband then, but it was her coach back then, said, absolutely not. Kalisha was disqualified. It's not fair. There's no reason for her to do that to herself. We're going to win or we're going to take our walk or buy, whatever it was, and be crowned as the 118 Golden Gloves champion. And so- Was this at the same time I was fighting there? Or was this after I went pro? It probably was. Uh, I want to say it was two thousand. It was two thousand six or five. That's the year I went pro. I went pro okay. in six. Yeah, this was. I think. No, no, no. I'm lying. This was not two thousand six. This was two thousand four. It had to be four. Two thousand four. And um, and then so well, then, then I don't they wonder go- if I was there. You probably were because I had met Ada Velez. I met Belinda. I met a lot of uh, uh and females who were like champions were coming up and stuff. Yeah. There was a lot, there was a lot of women there. It was, it was, uh, it was women. I wonder if it blood. was the same year I fought her and I fought Teresa O'Toole. And when I fought, uh, Emma or Katie. I remember Teresa O'Toole fighting. I dropped Teresa O'Toole. I remember her fighting. So it probably was because. That's I'll, crazy. I'm gonna be, I didn't mean, I didn't see you there. I'm gonna, if I mean, I, I'm gonna, I didn't know. I'm going to pull up the archives. That's what I'm gonna do. But, but, <laughs> but so, so anyway, so we were like, um, anyway, she said, no, I'm not going to do it. So then they say, you know what? Uh, we do have a 122 pounder who ended up getting a, a walkover because there was nobody at 122. And if your daughter is, is okay with moving up in weight, then she can fight the 122 pounder if we confirm with her and let her know that somebody moved up. So I wouldn't be disqualified because I'm moving to a new you're moving class. up in a weight class and she ha- right. didn't have anybody to fight. Right. And so okay. they asked, they asked the other girl and the other girl was game. She was like, yeah, this little girl, I'm gonna beat her up. She she fight. Trying to, yeah. She tried to come up to 122. And so, and it was just so funny. Cause I, I, I remember I ate McDonald's that morning. I was eating everything. Cause I had just been a small 118 pounder and I ended up being 118.6. <laughs> and then, <laughs> And then, and then when, when, when I fought this fight, Brooke, let me tell you, let me tell you, first off, we have this on a video somewhere. I'll, I gotta look it up, but she's, she was big. She wasn't just like skinny and tall. She was like a little bit taller than me and she was uh, hefty. And <laughs> she went out there trying to knock me out. And, and this was the first time I really tried the uppercut. I'll never forget. I was like, and her head was like, boop. And, and, then, and then because it worked, I did it the whole fight. I did uppercuts the whole, I was like, boop, boop. And her head looked crazy. Her head was like, boop, like a bobblehead. She was a bobblehead. I just, hey, I stuck to what worked and that was that. And then, and then after I won the fight, you know, obviously, I was obviously. so, I was so skinny and so little compared to her and I had won the fight. And and I remember everybody uh, was coming up to me, and they were like oh, that uppercut. And all I was thinking was like, yeah, that's like the first. Time I just I learned that try. today. I, I just, just learned, learned that. Today. <laughs> I was like, I just learned that today. <laughs> <laughs> that that was one of my that's one of my favorite memories. Another reason why, and I was talking to boxing scene earlier was because um, you know I had got I had gotten bullied a lot back in the day. And when I was a freshman, when I came back and I won the Golden Gloves, they did a seven page article in the Press Enterprise. I was on the front page, followed me in school. And next thing you know, the whole high school was like, what's up champ? 
Hey, champ. And that was when my nickname became the champ. And nobody messed with me. Nobody messed with me ever again. Nobody called me nothing. Because if they if anybody called me a name, the other person will say, Oh, champ, gonna oh. knock you out. <laughs> Male or female, it goes both ways. These hands right. um, are bisexual. They work both ways. Okay. Exactly. I got I, I got respect on the streets. <laughs> That's what's oh, up. Man. oh man. That's yeah. so funny. That, that was one of my favorite ones. I mean, the other one I would say is is uh is um I, I when I punched a girl in right here in the center of her stomach. This was the national, she threw up in the middle of the ring. Oh just, my god. She just bleh, all over the ring. That's one I remember. And then, you know, you know, um, at Delilah Ruiz, they call her El Cobra. So uh, at Delilah, she's a little badass. And when she was coming up, you know, we're the same age. We was the same weight class, same region, same district. Yeah. And um, she, when I fought her, I only had a couple fights. And I had, I had beat her teammate. I beat the other sister on the teammate. And then I fought her and I beat her. And I'll never forget how hard she was crying in the bathroom. And then she came back, we rematched, and she beat my ass. And then <laughs> I was like, she wanted some, she wanted some vengeance. She had some real, some personal stuff. But then we, we ended up slugging it out uh, five times. And every time we fought, you know, I hate to say it, she'll tell you the truth. I mean, it, I mean, if she keeps it real, I don't know. But I had... I want to say it was 50 50 you know what i mean with the yeah. with the uh who would win they, of course lbc they gave it to her everybody loved her i live in socal where it's predominantly mexican and yeah. you know what i mean like they they favored all their mexican champions way back this 20 this is 20 years ago yeah. you know th this is when that you know the politics and the amateurs were really really bad because yeah. you couldn't you couldn't just open up an iphone and record it and put somebody on blast on right. social media so people got away with whatever they got away with. And whatever was they want to do. It was a part of it. It was normal. You know what I mean? I just we, we was used to it. But but there are there are officials who ended up becoming pro officials to this day who remember mine and her fights and and the standing ovations we would get because we were both a hundred miles per hour. And yeah. we would just we would go toe to toe toe to toe toe to toe back and forth and no, neither one of us would quit i definitely give her that second fight but that other the other time we fought what ended up happening is i i i fought two different styles the first style i tried to box her and move yeah. around and and it just it, in the amateurs you can't do that you can't box you 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 backing up you yeah. losing if they see your back you lost yeah. the fight. You cannot you box. There's no such thing as boxing. But then the last fight, I remember I said, I'm going toe to motherfucking toe. <laughs> I, said, I, said, I said, I'm going toe to toe. We're going to stay right here in the center of this ring all damn night. I remember, I remember my dad said, I remember my dad said, he said, uh, he said, we go in a war. He always would say just like that. We go in a war. And I, and I give thanks to my mama because she Mexican. And she gave me that hard head, so I'm a, I was able to do both when I wanted to, and yeah. so I went well. I went toe to toe with her, and I know I won that fight. Like it's not even you know how you you know how you finish, and you're just yeah. like you, like you're, yeah. You're I, I felt I felt her face smash in my in my in my fist, and then yeah. you think about how you feel, and you feeling good, like you ain't got you ain't got nothing that hurt that took yeah. you. I knew you know, and they they gave it to her. But it's okay. It's okay because the whole crowd stood up. Everybody was hugging me. Everybody was. It was. It felt like we both won. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like everybody said, these two girls are amazing. You know, yeah. she ended up going down a different path than me. She she went and had kids and stopped boxing. Yeah. I went and turned pro. So I became a world champion. And then now I'm starting kids. And she came back after kids and now she's gone and became a wbc champion so it's just regardless of what happened everybody yeah. saw two world champions in that ring that night and that's yeah. exactly what happened and i do believe everything happens for a reason because me and her would have been duking it out in the beginning of my pro career oh Woo! my god yeah that would have oh been god. fire that would have been, been a fire. crazy match I, I mean she's just 
it's it's elusive you know what i'm saying it's yeah. elusive the way she is because her style it, it doesn't look like she will, will knock or or scare or put somebody on the edge of their seat but when you're in there with her that same little girl that was crying in the bathroom that i'll never forget after i beat her she fights with that she fights yeah. every every single fight with that and when you yeah. fighting somebody with that kind of heart it, I don't care what type of bad habit they have. I don't care if they drop their left the whole fight. With that type of heart, you fighting for your life. Yeah, you know they're, just coming. So, they're just coming. Right. Yeah. So good for her for be, for becoming a champion and coming back after you know starting her life and starting kids and then coming back later and later in life. Good for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely, absolutely. Um, now, speaking of in 2006, after being advised that they weren't, again, going to have the Olympics for women in 2008, oh, um, yeah. just two weeks. Oh, come on. Hurry up and say hi. My husband's got to say hi. Uh. <laughs> come here. Oh, he's going to, he'll be back. He went to get some. I don't okay. know. Um, you decided to turn pro at, um just two a few weeks after your 18th birthday which come to figure out we both went pro in 2006. oh wow because um, i went Same pro in 2006. Time. um right. oh here he is okay come say hi how you doing long time no see yeah i know right how's things <laughs> everything is good man time flies i can't believe how long it's been i just can't believe it yeah it's, I'm old, it's man. It's I'm wild. Old. He is we old all now. old. We all old. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm over here moving five, ten times because as a boxer, you have arthritis everywhere. Your body <laughs> feels like you're 50 years old. Like, come I know. on. I I'm know. like, I'm like, yeah, the skin, the skin is okay, y'all. But you don't understand. Being an athlete for 25 years, your whole body hurts. I'm like, yeah. I'm, I'll, I'll always yeah, need extra know pillows. Too. You know, too. Oh, uh, Michael <laughs> said hello. Ooh. Michael. Hey. Hey, hey, Michael. hey Michael. I'm not ignoring your guys' comments over there. I will, I promise 100 percent make Kalisha answer every one of your questions. But some of the questions y'all are asking, we are going to talk about. So um just give me a minute. We will <laughs> we will talk about them. Um, so anyway, we both went pro in 2006. You went pro at 18, though. I was probably, oh my god, I was probably like I don't know, 24, five, I don't know. I think I'm, I'm, I'm several years older than you, I think. You're, yeah, you're, you're a couple, I'm 35 now, so. Okay, so yeah, I will be 42 this year. Yeah, you're, you're sick, about six. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I was in my 20s when I went pro. I got a late start. But anyways, yeah. um, tell us about the decision and your experience transitioning from the Amis to the pros. So I remember when they announced that women weren't going to be in the Olympics. I remember having this conversation with my dad and we were very big on um, some fighters that spend so long in the amateurs and then they don't really make great pros. And what I mean by that is, is you develop a, a textbook boxing where you're, you're focused on, it's a style, you know, and you're focused on points. And you're, you're focused on these other things. And then we don't even know if you have a chin, because if you go pro, you can be the greatest amateur fighter, but if you don't have a chin, you are not going to do well. So, yeah. and, and I don't care whether it's an amateur fight or it's a pro fight, every punch that you get hit by your body is an engine and you only can put so many miles on your engine until the damage is going to start to show you're going to start to feel it you're going to start to get worn and torn down you know you you put damage on your body so when we found out that the women weren't going to be in the next olympics i would i was going to be 20 years old and then we'd have to wait for the following i'd be end up being what 24 something like yeah. that when, when and that wasn't even a, a yes or a no it was a maybe so it's maybe. like yeah. oh so you want me to wait this long for a maybe Mm, that would be stupid. Yeah. And the main reason why why I went pro when I was 18 is because I hated the amateurs. Some yeah. people, some you people, have a loved, style. I hated the amateurs. And it was because, you know, locally there were favorites and, and it was just a numbers game. It was a sprint. 
it was a you know and and it and that's just how it was and then they didn't let women back then go to uh, international i wasn't able to go to hawaii i wasn't able to travel for these international tournaments what i remember uh winning a regional and then commission would say oh congratulations you're finished but then my my teammate a guy would say oh so when when are the uh you know nationals gonna be when are internationals gonna be and i'd be like wait why is he asking about the next and then they'd say oh you you're you can't go to that why because you're a female and back then i was i was always like oh okay so females don't go you know because i was young right uh but but now that i'm older it's like that's some bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just because I'm a female, I cannot go. Y'all don't have it for women, you know, to be able to go and, and compete on those levels. That's a damn right. shame. Yeah. And um, and so it just, it wasn't, it wasn't really for me and my dad. We didn't feel, we felt like we've got all that we can get from Out it. We it. had a ton of fights. I could see if I, if I started boxing when I was 15, 16, you yeah. know, that's, crazy but i had gotten eight i had gotten eight years already both in the gym and competing in the amateurs so we were like yeah it's time let's go let's start growing and then my first fight i remember when they took off the headgear i was like i could see better <laughs> yeah right i was like wow i could see way better and i loved it i was like oh everything's quicker everything feels faster i love that i could see more i just yeah. i i loved the pros compared to the amateurs i yeah. never liked wearing headgear i naturally was super excited for pros i i like the small gloves i love yeah. I mean, I grew up fighting all the boys in the garage and the neighbors. I grew up no headgear, just knuckles and yeah. doing doing dumb stuff. You know, I was a street kid. I was I like to say I was an alley cat. But but yeah, I, I remember just loving the transition. And it wasn't even like attention because I didn't get a lot of attention. A lot of people think I got a lot of attention for some reason internationally or in other states. They all thought that I was just this glorified female boxer in California, but I always had to fight to get on cards with golden gloves, you know, these local promoters. We yeah. had to we had to say, okay, um, we'll take a purse cut, we'll sell 100 tickets, um, and then we will uh, fly the girl. We had to negotiate like begging for, yeah. for us to be put on these cards but my dad he was he's a computer programmer so he was always talking 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 to different fighters pulling them in pulling them in grabbing them all over you know helping yeah. the matchmaker because they didn't know nothing about women's boxing yeah. helping the matchmaker get things together and then helping you know pr getting stories out and selling these tickets and and i always did sell out locally yeah. never never did i never i never not sold out and that was mainly because i had generated a name in the amateurs so the people yeah. the people wanted me to fight my my local yeah. community loved me to fight i was the grand marshal in the city parade i was provided with the proclamation of city of Moreno valley you know i had my fourth grade teacher at my at my fight that wrote a note in my locker room and said your fourth grade teacher's here you know it was a I, I, if i ever fought a local casino sold out yeah. but but the way promoters looked at it is they just looked at it as that extra card that's gonna that's gonna bring that in bring in money in case these guys don't pack out but i'm investing in you know what i'm right. saying because th this was back when timothy bradley was being promoted by thompson boxing and you know he became a superstar and every small time promoter that's what they want yeah. you know they they want that next great male fighter that's going to yeah. bring them a lot of money or bring them a big dollar fight in the future so they try to tie up these guys and that's what used to happen but but otherwise all politics aside i loved pro versus amateur boxing yeah absolutely um let me scroll back before i continue with my questions go to some of the questions we got people asking over here let's see um collins would like to know what's the difference between a knight, Ava Knight, I'm assuming he means, and Claudia Lopez. 
Oh, that's a good question. Like he want they want to know what the difference is between them. Yeah. Um, you know what? Ava Knight and Claudia Lopez. That's a good question. You know, Claudia was a southpaw, and and she Claudia was really really tough. She was naturally bigger than me. I remember when we fought, we questioned the scale. <laughs> We were in Mexico and they do whatever they want out there. And yeah. and, and when we got on the scale, it the the, the scale went zzz. it was like a magnet and we both like just zzz. right. We both weighed the exact same thing. And and she was a, a fill in and I was the one who was promoted at the time, but she was a fill in because somebody dropped out, but she was big. We could tell that she was a lot bigger than me. She had to have yeah. been 132 or 140 something by the time she fought me she was big and she was a lefty and i had trained for a right-handed boxer so when a southpaw was dropped on me last minute it was kind of like shit well let me box and let me do what i gotta do whereas with ava both times i fought ava my camp was 100 percent focused on ava's style you know so with claudia i felt a lot more uncomfortable with the style that I was going in, because I'm a thinker when I fight. I'm a boxer. I think about things. I like to plan out things and then I execute. And it just she caught me. She caught me a little bit off guard because I didn't. There was no footage on Claudia. There was no uh, information. We just knew she was tough as hell and she she had a lot of upsets on her record. Yeah. And at that time, I had to defend my title, or, or you know what I mean. I was gonna lose it. I had to. I had yeah. no choice. For yeah. women, you take you take what you can get, or they strip you of the title if you don't defend it in a certain amount of months. Oh yeah. So, um, so so yeah. I mean, with Ava, as far as I would say, geez, it's it's hard to to compare them because yeah, too. Ava's yeah. one eighteen, and this other girl is just a lot bigger of a fighter. Yeah. You know, if you look at who that girl fought, she fought bigger girls. Yeah. So, if that girl was able to squeeze down to one eighteen you know, then that's another story of, of comparing. But I just it's hard for me to compare them because it's two different weight classes. And totally. they're, they're both equally, you know, tough, like they were both very tough fights for me. And just one was a lefty. So it's like, yeah. it's like trying to compare apples and grapes to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I guess the biggest difference is this wall too, the size and one was a oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's really the difference between the two. Yeah, and and people don't understand this. A lot of people don't understand that size. It does matter. Size. Oh, makes it makes a big, big difference. It makes a huge difference because, like, just like uh, Ryan Garcia was complaining after the fight that he wasn't able to gain more than ten pounds before he fought Davis because of a, a clause that they had in their contract. Yeah. And then when you look at Ryan's past fights and what he fought at, and and that moving up that one weight class, it just it makes a huge you know difference because right. fighters. We suck down, we dry yeah. out just to get to the weight that we're trying to get to. So if somebody is sucking down to 125, that means they're naturally 160. If somebody's yeah. sucking down to 118, then they're naturally 140. You know what I'm saying? It's a, it, on paper, you know, in the ring, it's five pounds. Oh, we're within three pounds. But in reality, it's always 20 pound, 20 pound difference. Yeah. So, so people naturally suck down 20 pounds. So if you have somebody that usually fights in a weight class above that, you're going to be looking at somebody who's coming down 40 pounds. You know, yeah. it, it's just, it's, and then even in the ring, you know, when I jab you know, or when I throw a punch, you, you could feel the impact kind of buckles and back. But when you have a bigger person, it don't, it's like, you don't even, yeah. they don't even, them, but it's like, they're, they're not even phased by it. You, you just got to beat the hell out of them because yeah. there ain't nothing, nothing you're going to do that's going to make them retreat. No back up, nothing. And that was how it was with Claudia. Like I was I was throwing some really good shots. And I remember they were landing clean and she just was like a machine, just walking forward, walking forward, walking forward. Yeah. And then with whereas Ava, I remember connecting with Ava and I see that she would be like, ooh, ooh. you know, she would back up a little bit yeah. and try to be a little bit more careful coming in. So yeah. it's just two different weight classes, two different fighters can't really compare those two. I got you. Um, Collins also want to know what's your favorite fight? You know, my favorite fight, it has to be, it has, uh, it has to be Angel Gladney. And the reason why is a lot of people don't 
put into consideration the training camp leading up to the fight. They just look at the fight. Yeah. But whoever I was going to be in the ring with, I was going to knock them the fuck out. Excuse my language, but no, you're be, fine. That, be, you see what I'm saying? Because yeah. that fight, it was a switch for me. It, it was a switch that I turned on and I had never in my career trained that hard ever. I remember the fitness coach that I was working with had the incline all the way up on the treadmill and he had the, the setting speed on the highest speed. And I just remember him screaming at me, keep going, keep going. And I was just going. And, and when I first started training camp, I couldn't do but 20 seconds. By the end of my training camp, I was going and going and going and going. And if you yeah. look at the photos of my body, you know, for that, it, it my body, it, it was ripped. There was just yeah. no fat. It was, I was in tremendous shape and it was because it was at the Staples Center. It was, you know, the WBO, it was in my hometown and it was like, wow, I have an opportunity to be a world champion. and. And uh, we, it just didn't matter who I was going to be in the ring with. I, I felt like this is it. This is my big break. You know, yeah. this is my big break. And I remember in the beginning, of, I was throwing up in the beginning of training camp. I was throwing up. And then by the time it got to the end of my training camp, I was just I, like, you touch me. It's just pure muscle. Yeah. I was just so in great shape. You know, yeah. I felt, I felt so good going in there. And then, so because I felt so good and i and i lost the weight naturally i was i had a dietitian you know helping me because a lot of my career i'll be honest with you brooke people don't know this but i did not lose weight healthy i did not have support of dietitian i always had it stupid i just didn't have all that extra stuff you know what i'm saying and yeah, I, still, I didn't have I, that no. yeah i i don't even know how i was winning but but yeah I, I, this fight I actually had all of that and it was being taken very serious because of what we had at the, on the table you know and then yeah. and then two we were said we were going to be a the buy fight the, if, uh, if there's a knockout and we'd be televised yeah there was there was knockouts all that night except the main event and we didn't get televised so that was that but that was one of my favorite fights my other favorite fight was when I when I rematched Ava because I know I beat her ass. I know I boxed her. <laughs> I know she, I won. I won that fight, Brooke. I won it. And and I remember just because she she was like my kryptonite. She was the only fighter in my whole career that beat me legitimately. Like she humbled me. I was 10 0 yeah. when I fought her, and I was like, I'm gonna beat this girl up, you know. And and she went in there and boom, caught me in the first round. And she stunned me with a straight left because she came out left-handed and I didn't even expect that. And boom, knocked me clean out my tracks and stopped me in my in my tracks. And I was like, okay, okay, this girl could hit. And then, <laughs> and, and then I was like, okay, I'm gonna resort to violence. So I tried to go toe to toe and I was getting beat, but I was still punching. And, and, so, and so, oh my goodness, this girl, she, she humbled me so much. So when I had the rematch, she was not supposed to be my fight. I was supposed to defend my title versus uh, some girl from New Mexico. And then the commission wouldn't pass it, which was dumb because the girl had knocked out the last three fights. But that's California commission for you, whatever. Uh, that's how it was for women. And, and so they, my dad said, he, I had, I think, six weeks before the fight. He said, well, the only one that wants to fight you is Ava. <laughs> And I remember I was like, damn, man. I was like, damn. But I, I'll never forget I was on the treadmill in the garage. And I looked at him and I knew, and, and I was like, so? I remember I just looked at him like, so? He's like, the only one that wants to fight you is Ava. Because he likes to get my reactions, you know? Yeah. And I, and I looked at him and I was like, so? I don't care. I was just like, because I, I wanted that rematch. Yeah. Deep, deep inside, I really wanted that rematch. And... Yeah. Her coach, after the fight, went up to me and he said, hey, coach, to my dad, he said, hey, good job, man. Y'all got this one, though. It was a good fight. We got to do this again, but y'all got this one. Her coach told us that yeah. before they before they said the decision. And then uh, one said it a draw, one said I won, and then the other one who 
didn't give it to me. Uh, he actually does not like us. <laughs> that judge did not like us. I won't. I won't say his name because he doesn't even deserve a shout out. But he he uh, used to tell a lot of other people that he doesn't like my style. He doesn't like the way I boxed, and uh, he just didn't. He didn't. He didn't like this. He didn't vote for me. He probably didn't even box. No, he has no boxing history whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, shut up. So oh, shut up. Yeah, you know yeah. What talking about. Right, right. But you I guess I people like that. Right. I just know when I first fought her, she had caught me so many times clean. But this last time I fought her, she she did not. She did not catch me with anything that hurt me, anything that stunned me. And I I was I just remember looking and and yeah, of course she caught me, but nothing like mm -hmm. the first fight. And I just right. I remember I was so much more relaxed because the first time I fought her, I fought her fight. Yeah. She's a scrapper. She is a toe to toe scrapper get in your face and i did that i fought her fight but the second time i fought her i was picking my shots i was bouncing i was everything was connecting yeah. it was like I, I was swimming you know i felt right. real good and i remember i was even i was counting i was counting the the uh the uh, what's it called the i was counting the dang i can't remember the word i'm thinking of uh, <laughs> i was counting each session oh my god i'm having a brain each problem. round Yes, thank you. Round. I was counting. <laughs> God, I had a brain fart. I was like, box, thanks, thanks, boxing. I'm messing up my memory. No, I'm just kidding. But I was counting each round and I had given her four. I want to say I gave her, I gave her four. And that was like me being nice. Like, okay, well, that one was close. Could have went either I, way. I guess I'll get, yeah, out of a 10 round title fight. So I had given her four. So I knew like I had clearly won and uh, that was that. But now we're best friends so yeah i had one like that too well i've had several obviously where i think i won the fight and i didn't but um one very similar to that um in colorado when i fought jennifer barber you just took me back to memory lane when i beat jennifer barber's butt in the amateur and they, gave, it, and the they gave it to her yeah it was the same scenario when we went to that fight um the promoter oh. was like all about us and Oh, we're gonna bring you out here and it's, it's like you're gonna the show's gonna be all about you da, da 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 we show up there and we meet the guy and he carried around like his little folder book thing well the fucking cover of his book was jennifer barber yeah that's and i was like why is jennifer on your thing and he's like oh it's, 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 it blew it off whatever <sighs> so yeah but that fight the same type of thing like her coach that's came up cool. afterwards and said you know i mean pretty much definitely thought that she lost and they gave her the decision. So Aww. yeah, we've been in a similar scenario, but yeah, yeah. Jennifer Barber, I, I didn't ever fight her in the amateurs, but she was always there. We never got crossed, but yeah, we fought in the pros and I still think I beat her ass. Yeah, the only reason why I fought her was because when I was an amateur, we called it uh, practice, practice fight. So I used to move from 106 to 112 to 118 to 125 to, to 132 i went as high as 132 but we knew we could do that because I, we have a headgear and some big gloves yeah. and i had moved all the way up to 132 uh to fight jennifer barbara and i just remember we, i had i easily boxed her out and they gave it to her i mean yeah. it was it was probably a little bit close i guess but yeah but it, we we felt but she was favored she was always favored always favored in the amateurs always yeah. oh right. yeah amateurs was her that was her deal yeah she, she you couldn't you, you'd need a dropper and make it very very sig significant to to get, get a win over her. absolutely exactly absolutely mm -hmm. Um, my buddy Michael Orr is in the house. That's who was talking earlier. He also has tons of shows on Talk and Fight. So if you're into the podcast thing, he knows everything there is to know about boxing. Um, but he said, what's up, Wild Wild? Can't wait to hear your story from the beginning. We're getting there. We're getting there, Michael. Um, <laughs> did you check on the amateurs, Michael? You said you were going to check. Was Were we fighting at that same tournament together? Let me know in the in the comments if we were at the same at the same tournament um, at the Golden Gloves in Chicago. Um, I will answer some more of your questions, Collins, but I'm going to answer a couple more of mine and we maybe we'll answer them in between. Um, so uh, February 23rd, 2006 is when you made your pro debut, but I was very um, impressed because it was similar to like my beginning of my career. You fought Susanna Warner, who was a former title holder 
and she was two and two. Mm. Um, you fought her for for your pro debut, but you didn't. You knocked her down in the first round and won a unanimous. But that was a very tough opponent for your pro debut. How did mm. you feel? Was there? I mean, was she a challenge for you at all? Being a former title holder and it would be in your pro debut at eighteen. You know, I hate to say this. I'm going to say it with love and respect, but. She wasn't much of a challenge for me, but this is why, because I fought her kryptonite and, I, and I'm a firm believer that styles make fights. Yeah, they know, do. The, a, a specific style might have been what she could tee off on, but yeah. the, the style that I had gone in there with, because I knew she was a lefty and, and I knew anytime I fought a Southpaw, I used to know no other, no other style, but get in her face with the right hand and go straight down the middle. One, two, one, two, hook, one, two, one, two. So when I went out there, I was young and I was very hungry and I, and it was my first fight and I all, I had so many people there, Brooke, like yeah. it, it, it sold out to where they had to pull out chairs and yeah. it, to this day, the casino remembers that like the people out there, they love it. So the crowd had just enhanced my adrenaline. The the people, I mean, they really can make a fight shift. Oh, so yeah. with, with that adrenaline and with it being my very first fight, it's all, it was almost like I felt bad for Suzanne because I was 18 hungry as hell, you know? Yeah. So I had gone, I knew no better. I like to say it like that. I knew no better. I didn't think about getting caught. I didn't think about how how hard an eight ounce punch. I wasn't cautious. I mean, I could have been dropped. I didn't, yeah. I didn't know better. So I went out there like a bat out of hell. Yes. Yeah. You know, going, well, I, we all start our careers that way. I think, yeah, I mean, do. My first I do. Problem, I, I two, agree. two to three fights. I was, I it's like, if I go back now and look at him, I'm like, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah. <laughs> What were you doing? Like you looked like a wild animal, um, but then you settled down. But I think it's just it's new. Like, yeah. and new. but that's that's what that's why though with Suzanne, she was she was more experienced. She had a lot more rounds, and she came out you know ready to pick her shots. And I wasn't even allowing her to breathe or pick a shot. And yeah. I just I just I fought as if my life was on the line, and. It because of that, my offense was my defense. So I didn't even display the I, my offense was my defense the whole fight. So you could imagine how quick that went for me. Yeah, it was it was to me it was like a blur. It happened so quick, and I did not allow her to tee off. So because I didn't yeah. allow her to tee off, she I felt like she never really hit me. I felt like it was one of my easiest fights. And yeah, I, I say defense mode. I say this with love. Yeah, I say this with love and respect because she's a great fighter. But yeah. it was four. It was four rounds. She probably never got the opportunity to tee off, you know, right. to display what she has. Yeah. And and her being a lefty, I was like, okay, I know what I got to do, man. I got to go out there and I got to just, I gotta just go in. I got to go in. So I, that's what I did. Yeah. yeah. But but when cool. she ended up moving on and becoming a great and a world champion, I remember everybody was like, wow, she was a she was a good fighter, man. She was. And, and yeah. And and. I just, I feel like I never got to feel the great fighter that the she great, is. The, the fighter she became, yeah. Be, exactly, because I just didn't give her that opportunity to breathe. In four right. rounds, two minutes, yeah. Nah, it was a it sprint. Was quick. Yeah, yeah it, was too, it was too quick. Yeah, maybe, yeah, if you'd have met later on in your careers, it might have been a little bit different story, but yeah, oh, yeah. if you don't give people time to breathe, they they don't there ain't much they can do besides retreat. Yep. And I still had that amateur, you know, style. Yeah, mentality. But, yeah. Yes. I had an amateur mentality, amateur style. So I went out there going just blazing. And she probably wasn't used to that. She was probably thinking it wasn't gonna be that fast paced, but yeah. I brought hey. that to her. Yeah. You brought, yeah. you brought the dog out to that one. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. I'm I'm bipolar. <laughs> <I'm just kidding. laughs> We all are. Other, I swear yeah, we, we all we got some problems. <laughs> we got multiple all, uh all fighters multiple, got multiple little personalities little for sure. Right. We got a little bit of things going on. We should switch it like um, a light switch. <laughs> yeah. All over the place. Just here, there, right here over there. Um <laughs> we did have um a few common opponents though. We've talked about a few of them. Um, but we both fought Elizabeth Moreno. 
Um, we talked about this a little bit before. I fought her in 2007 at the Pachanga Resort and Casino in Temecula, California on an all-women's card. Wow. But this is the day that we met for the first time, and I can still remember you coming up to talk to me after the fight. Um, I was so upset in that fight, though, because I was literally beating the shit out of her. Like, she so bad. Down. I mean, that was like one of the worst beatings I had gave. <laughs> And she just would not fucking go down. <laughs> and the ref, he was so close to stopping it like three freaking times. And then she got that fucking cut and was bleeding everywhere. And they stopped it on the stool before oh, we completed four rounds. So they called it a draw. And I didn't oh, even no, know. Oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> yes, they did. You don't remember? No, I don't remember. Oh my I god. So it. yeah, I don't remember if it was the second or the third round when they stopped oh, wow. it in between, but I had gave her this uppercut and I still don't know that the cut came from a headbutt. They ruled it an accidental headbutt. I it actually I am start I, I hit her with that freaking uppercut and she like bout flew out the ring. Yeah, okay. I'm starting to remember and you know what's funny? The reason why I don't remember is because in my eyes, I was like, oh, she she beat her up. She won. I never yeah. even realized that they did that. Yeah, I they just assumed in between won. rounds because they said the cut was too bad, but they ruled it a headbutt. And I don't know. Maybe it was a headbutt. I don't know. I just thought it was from the from the uppercut that about, like, I don't know, threw her out the ropes. But <laughs> they stopped it. And I was, like, so pissed because that was the first time I was ever televised. It was on the best dance um, sports show. Yeah. I was beating the shit out of her. I was still, I mean, I was undefeated. And I and they and I didn't even know that they were gonna call it a draw. Like they stopped the fight, and then I'm like, oh, they're just gonna go to the scorecards. Well, I've won yeah. every fucking round, so I didn't care. But I then felt like they like made up a draw. Stuff. I was like, <laughs> yeah, remember like I, Chris was trying to calm me down in the corner and I like whacked the water bottle and it went fine across the ring. And they're like, you got to calm down. You I believe that you were crazy. I was so you had mad. Grit, I was freaking out. I got to fix my shirt. Too. You were a freaking animal, man. I was freaking out. But yes, but even after that, I calmed down. <laughs> and I remember getting out of the ring and then, of course, meeting you later. So, but we kind of talked about this before. I know Eric wanted us to talk about it. So obviously you remember that. Yes, you caught course. her later in 2008. But so I guess tell everybody a little bit about our first meeting. My first match with her or mine and your, your first meeting? With our first meeting, like when we met. Oh, oh, okay. I remember that like it was yesterday. I just remember that I had caught you after the fight. So it was after the fact and you were in, you you know how, you know how the rings like in the middle and then like you got the side where people could walk up through the yes. aisles. You were like walking right there and I was like, hey, I, and you, didn't, you just didn't turn around and I don't even think you, you just probably, I don't know if you thought I was maybe just like a fan because I technically was, I was just a yeah. fan. I was a, a, a women's boxing fan back then. And I remember I was telling my dad, I was like, I was like, dad, I was like, yeah, she was so cool. I was like, I was like, she's so cool. Look at the, you were an entertainer. I love that. Like in the yeah. corner, you wore every single expression on your face and you yeah. did it, but it showed confidence. It showed like, like grit. It showed toughness. It showed mental toughness. And I just was so inspired. I was so inspired. And I was like, cause I, I didn't really have that when I first started boxing. It came later, yeah. but when I first started, I was just always a little intimidated, shy girl that just did. I did what I was told to do, you know. Yeah. So I just remember looking at the way you carried yourself and presented yourself, and I was like, "Damn, she's cool." So I wanted to get a picture with you, and then my dad is the guru of women's boxing. He knew yeah. everything about everyone, no matter what. And I remember him telling me all about you, and he was saying how you, how how you were put in against your odds like the odds so many times and you would always be the underdog that upset always. everybody yeah and he was talking yeah. about he was talking about your background and everything that you that you've done and i was just like oh that's cool that's cool and then i think uh, yeah that was your husband your husband yeah. i yeah. remember seeing him too 
And I remember because, you know, interracial couple back then, it wasn't common. It really wasn't. No, it I'm going no. to keep it real. It wasn't as common. So I remember when I saw it, I was just like, ah, oh, and her dude's black. Why is she cool? <laughs> I'm like, You're like, that's my own girl she right cool, there. She cool people. Yeah. yeah. Was, but, but it was just so, it was so, uh, you were so humbling. Like, because in the past, I've gone up to Layla. Ali, I've gone up to uh, 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 Christy Martin. I've gone up to Lucia Riker. You know, I was always in the mix of females. All of them. Yeah. I was all. Yeah, I would somehow get to their to their fight or you know VIP or at the same place. I was just always in the mix. And um, you know, you meet you meet female boxers. I mean, I'm trying to name. I'm, I'm trying to think of a couple more. You know, I met a lot. I met Anne Wolf. I met um. Oh man. Melissa Hernandez, Belinda, and um, Ada Velez. And you meet these fighters, and they're very, like, and, you know, like, they just, yeah. When I met you, you were like, hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah, what's your name? So I was like, yeah, she's so cool. Yeah, like, I was like, I know you. Usually you're like, I'm a Kalisha West. I'm like, I know you. I know your Aww. name. I didn't even I don't even I didn't even know you said that to me back then. I was yeah. probably still a little bit like starstruck because I I wasn't like Kalisha Wild Wild West at that yeah. time. Yeah. I was just like the one that was getting started, you know, getting my feet wet locally. And then yeah. so if another female boxer knew me, I was like, you do? <laughs> I was like, wow. <laughs> you were in the buzz a little bit. You were start you were one of those um ones to watch out for on W Band. Oh, well, you don't you, know who, who, you know, tunes in and, and pays oh attention. I, I, I was always on there. So, yeah, but oh, I knew sweet. a lot of people when they started. Uh, oh, but, yeah, cool. so that was that was an awesome experience. And I still remember you this day. And I was telling Eric before the show, I was super, this is the one that I was super excited for. Um, and I told my husband the same thing. I'm like, guess who I got next week? <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Aww. it was just because when we met, like I just had that connection. I was like, she's like, she's gonna be great. She's Aww. got the determination, she's got the grit, and I'm just like, she's kind of like me. Yeah. Only yeah. you're funnier. Like I'm not that funny, I don't think, but <laughs> we have the same type of attitude. <laughs> like uh, you tell it like it is type of attitude. Like you don't hold nothing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Of... I say exactly. I say exactly what's on my yeah. mind. Yeah. So I, I, I'm just like, she's cool yeah. people. Oh, um, that's cool. That's but cool. you did um fight her in 2008 so the next year later and oh, you yeah. did get the win with the unanimous decision um how did you was that fight anything for, i highly doubt it was anything for you either well I'm, i was laughing so hard when you were talking about your fight winner because the same thing happened to me i remember i was hitting her so hard i was like she is not budging and she no. was you know what's wild is when you, I felt like the harder I hit her, the more she would get angry. <laughs> like she would look at me, I would clock, clock her and she'd go, and then she'd come do some wild shit. And I was just yeah. like, nope. <laughs> right, nope. not today. <laughs> right, not today, Satan. And, but I was just like, my hand was hurting. Like it, it I want to say I popped a blood vessel too, where it was swollen. Yeah, just from hitting her, hit her. Yeah. And and it, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like your situation where the ref was looking like they should stop it. It was just me beating and just dogging and, and landing everything clean. And I just remember thinking, damn, this girl's so tough. She's just too tough. I she just was. it's it's too it's too much. Yeah. She did. That, she definitely that's why I, a head of steel. I'm telling you. That, right, yeah, yeah. She did. That's why the second time around, I was like. Cause you know I rematched her, right? Yes. Yeah, that's why the second time I was getting ready for the same thing. Yeah. And then I don't know if you saw the fight on YouTube. Did you know it's on YouTube? No. I'll have yeah, to watch. Well, it's very quick. So I remember that like it was yesterday. So <laughs> we went out there, and my husband was the one who told my dad, because again, our other opponent fell through. Something yeah. happened and and with a passport and the husband was like hey we'll fight we'll fight we want to fight we want to do it again let's do it again and my dad was like oh man you're gonna get you know you're gonna, you're gonna get this tough ass <laughs> you know like right. that's what you say he's like get ready just get ready to go to war with this girl that keep on coming and um it was round one 
and I was on a Tony, a James Tony undercard, and everybody had knocked everybody out that night. All the fights ended in knockout, and it was my turn. I was the last fight. You're like, I gotta knock her out. I don't even know how. I don't, look, look, look. This is what happened. This is what happened. I just look in the first round. It's on video. She comes in. She comes in with a wild overhand right and she catches me clean on the chin but it wasn't shit it, it didn't hurt me you know what i mean but it landed so clean that the whole crowd went whoa yeah the whole the whole crowd i cannot tell you how pissed off i was when that happened that's why i say the crowd can shake you it shook oh me. yeah oh man and so I, I oh my gosh it just executed so beautiful and i remember when they did that i was I, I backed up and I bounced a little bit, shook it off, and I and I just like I was like, oh, hell no! And I remember I just was I, I clenched my fist like I was shaking, and yeah. I went in and I and I went slip weave and I went boom, 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 and with a straight right, went to sleep. She just went to sleep, and I remember just <laughs> she no 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 she went bam. But face, yeah, face first, arms spread out on the on the thing. I have like, to look it up. I have yeah, to she look it up. she went to sleep, and then I I remember in my head I was like, man, because I'm like a nice person. I don't know, I'm just a nice person by nature. I remember I was like, I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, why y'all why y'all have to piss me off like that, man? I was like, 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 I, was, I was trying to be nice, right. and then you had to go do something stupid. Like, I was like, man, I was just gonna put on a good fight, and, you know, and, and do my show my skills, and y'all gonna right. piss me off, and y'all gonna make me go in there and knock her out. I was like, I like, why y'all make me so mad? Right. And it was just, it it's was your really, fault. And you did this to yourself. It was one of those cases when they say, oh, if you lose your head, your ass go with it. But I lost my head, and my ass didn't go with it. <laughs> It worked out in my case that day. It worked out for you that time. It worked out perfectly. It really, it really did. It really That's did. So I got, I, I got lucky. I didn't get tired. I got so mad. I, but I, 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 I did a beautiful combination, and it was poised, and it was, it was timed correctly, I, and every single shot landed. The left hook to the body, the left hook to the head, and the straight yeah. right down the middle. Every th single shot landed, connected perfectly. But it was, yeah. it was the straight right that she had gone asleep. Uh, nice. Yeah. I am 100% going to look that up as soon as we get off here. Yeah. Um, so you already kind of touched on this. I was going to ask you, but so everybody out there knows she's already talked about this a little bit, but it was September 18th, 2010 in Los Angeles. What's up, baby? Uh, just here. You know, I'm doing my, my podcast. Okay. Okay. Bye. <laughs> my middle one. Um, 2010, Los Angeles, California is when you won the vacant WBO Bantamweight title with a seventh round TKO over a game Angel Gladney. Uh, but you also, though, in that fight made history as the first boxing champion from the Inland Empire and also came the first female to win a world title on a Golden Boy Promotions fight card. Right. So yeah. we kind of yeah. already talked about that one. Yeah. Um, and your I didn't even realize. Actually, I actually didn't realize that until now i didn't even know really that. i didn't know that that i was the first um female to win art for real i didn't know that yeah yeah well, so for, for, for golden boy were, promotions yeah first um first boxing champion from inland empire you knew that i knew that uh, yeah first female to win a world title on a golden boy promotions card that's cool I yeah that. my god i thought I gave her a lesson today, y'all. <laughs> I told her something she didn't even know about herself. I learned something new every day. <laughs> um, but you did come back and successfully defended your WB, WBO title three consecutive years, traveling to Mexico, Argentina, and of course, the great USA. Yeah. Um, what were some of those title defenses like when you were traveling and defending them off of your home turf? um off the home turf not off, not out of the home turf well i'm gonna be honest they weren't they su it sucked I, I hated it um i hated being a world champion in the united states i hated being a female boxer in the united states i remember 
I remember feeling like I work so hard. I am right next to, you know, Chris Ariola, the nightmare, Freddie Barrera, um, you know, Carlos Bajorges, uh, Kasim Uma. You know, I, I, I'm training right next to these, these champions. Um, uh, and, and Neo, oh, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name right now, but um, I just, I've been there next to them and I'm doing everything that they're doing. They, you know, in boxing, there's no female workout, male workout. It's one team. You do exactly yeah. what the men do. And I'm doing everything to my fullest ability. I'm showing up every day. I'm training every day. I'm doing everything right. I'm eating right. I'm losing the weight. I'm, I'm practicing sparring 10 rounds, 12 rounds with four different people. I'm traveling for work. Um, I'm barely getting sleep. I'm, I don't have friends. I don't have a social life. And then when I'm defending my title, it's like one, maybe a couple of media outlets are, are there to support me that I'm so grateful for. I still know them today. But it, it, you know what I'm saying? It's like fighting for recognition. It was just a yeah. fight for recognition. It was a battle out the ring and in the ring. And it can get emotional for you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it could, it really get, it, I just remember, you know, when you're young, you're going through a phase of life where you're asking yourself, what am I doing with my life? And you're, yeah. you're, que you're questioning, what am I, what, what you don't want to waste time. You want, yeah. you want it all, you want it all and you're doing everything right to get it all, but you're not getting it all. Does that make sense? Yes. And it's all, all because of your gender. It's all because of your being a female. Yeah. And, and that ultimately what it was. And I just like some of the things that I've read in comments and, and some of the things that's been told to me blunt to my face, like, like I just, they, they, they replay, it's almost like trauma, you know, like yeah. it replays in my mind. Oh, how's boxing must not be doing too well. If you're still working here, you know, these things that are said yeah. And not never having that opportunity for television in, yeah. in the United States. That was what I was always waiting for was that TV opportunity in the United States. Never got it. So in the United States, I don't have great memories. Even with De La Hoya, when I fought Angel, I had to sell 250 tickets. I paid. Yeah, I always, that was the worst way. thing I can ever tell. Two selling tickets selling tickets like you're, i'm already not getting paid basically and then you want me to go out here while i'm trying to train and work full time yeah and yeah. some being a mom and all this other shit, and then you want me to try to go sell all these friggin' tickets for you like isn't that oh, your yeah. job guys oh, don't yeah. have to sell fucking tickets yeah no like, i know on. yeah and, and that their reasoning was oh uh proof to us that she can sell tickets yeah that she can sell tickets We'll what put a strategic name. Name. They'll put their damn name when they buy the ticket who they're coming to watch oh yeah it, it would have sold itself put me on one interview and then you'll get your ticket sold without yeah. me having to bust my ass over here you know it right. and that's the stress that's added on top of you having to fight and that that stress that i had was almost every it was almost every um amateur uh i'm sorry united states fight except with jerry hoffman and monterey bay beautiful experience rolled out the red carpet, amazing guy, rest in peace, amazing man who treated me very, very fairly. And I have so many fans in Monterey Bay, California to this day who remember those days like it was yesterday yeah. and, and respect me. Cause it's not, it's not necessarily, to be honest with you, it, it, it all, it's all a matter of how the promoter promotes you. That's yeah. all it is. You could be the greatest but if the promoter is talking about you putting pictures out video out, people are going to go i like her i yeah. want to see her i'm curious i'm going to be a fan of hers win lose or draw that's what it is yeah. and and back then there was just no promoters promoting any woman no, no. female None. so i hate my united states uh world title fights i had horrible experiences it was shitty um but if we talk about mexico canada um, I'm sorry, not Canada, um, the UK, uh, Denmark and Peru, Woo! Like Justin Bieber. <laughs> yeah. And that's the funny that you say that because the only memorable fight that I have where I actually felt like a freaking celebrity and like a fucking star was yep. my week in Mexico for the Mia St. John fight. And I was the fucking opponent. Yep. 
Yeah. But yeah. everybody, every single person in yep. Mexico knew me and they wanted pictures. I, I couldn't even leave my hotel room to go eat or go walk around. It was like you were mobbed. Like, can I get an autograph? Can I get a photo? Can I, I would sit down to eat and like people were like, I couldn't even eat my food. I was finally like, let's just take it back to the room. Like it's cold yeah, now. Male, male or female, they are They're boxing fans. fans. They are boxing fans. They are true For life. Oh yeah, and and they like don't all of them judge. Yeah, they don't judge. Yeah. They they treat them. They treat them. And what's and it's interesting because the Hispanic culture is is known for having the women stay at home and and yeah. take care of the kids and have the men be workers. So right. it's so it's so interesting that they are also one of the only countries that's a hundred percent support women's boxing a hundred percent respect female fighters and you know why it's because to them it's like what a beautiful thing that these women who can bring children into this world can can go out and, and punch and fight yeah. like like how we're doing it and do it just as good or better yes. you know they, they they're like respect it was know? insane over there yeah. i mean absolutely yeah. insane i mean yeah. Chris, my husband wasn't able to go with me for that one. So Chevelle Hallback and Nate Campbell went with me. Chevelle oh, cornered me for that fight. But, and then Nate came oh, out to help me for my training because Chevelle couldn't come the whole time. So like he came in and helped me do my wow. public workout, my training and stuff. And then she came in after and cornered me for the fight. But I mean, I don't know. Like it was like, I just want to go walk around and like look at some stuff and like the public weigh-ins, like the pre-weigh-ins, like they, it, the oh, public they go workout. Yep, it was they insane. Go and yep, uh, yep. I told him it was, it was surreal, really. Mm -hmm. I mean, yep, because yep. I got more attention there than in my hometown. And I guess it's just because it's, everybody knows me there. So it's like no big deal. Mm -hmm. See mm -hmm. me or whatever. Cause they, they knew me my whole life or whatever. But yeah, I mean, yeah. By the time the 10 days, I think it was there like seven to 10 days. But by the time I came home, I was like, Ooh, now I know why like celebrities are always kind of like sometimes they're assholes because it's like, dude, just let me breathe. Like you're tired. Yeah. Yeah. Because yep. I'm, and that happens to them every day, like forever. Like it was just like a week for me. And I was wow. like, I loved it. Same for you, probably. I mean, it was awesome. But like yeah. after a while, you're like, wow, like I'm glad that's over because holy shit, I just want to go get something to eat and not have 80,000 people come up and ask me for a photo or an autograph. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, especially when it's back to back and you're thinking of something you want to do or got to do yeah. and you can't, you get held back and held back. Yep, that's exactly yeah. like it was. Cause I was signed with Hector Garcia for a couple of years. So I fought four fights with him out there in Mexico. And every time I fought, I mean, they would have the, you know, those big uh, signs that spin in a circle on the taxis. Yeah. They had my my pictures all yeah, over the Yeah, we had like huge and... ass banners like across yep. the roads and the highways, yep. and like we were on billboards. Like yep. my yep. was on billboards, and I'm like, "Yep, oh, that's me. Yep, <laughs> that's me yep. up there." Yep. Um, yep. There's yeah, so, they even went as far as when we did the public weigh in, had all of us fighters stand up on the stage and take a photo, and they changed the damn billboard to that photo. Oh like, my gosh! I mean, it was crazy. <laughs> It was that was crazy. quick. That's crazy. yeah. I was like, wait, that's a different picture. Holy shit, we just took that. <laughs> I remember they were trying to get some photos of me on the beach for deportes, and I was like all uncomfortable in my little highlighter bikini. I was like, do I go like this? I gotta be sexy. I don't even know how to be sexy because they're like, Nigga, it's Mexico. You're so I'm like, I thought I was gonna come out here and spec. They got me on a bikini on a beach with my little highlighter. If you look up those photos, I look so funny. I got my braces showing. I look like a little, like, like, like a poodle out in the wilderness. Just like, because they follow you everywhere. <laughs> like, literally, they're just waiting, like, just yeah. waiting for you to make a move. Yeah, I was signed yeah. with um, Arely Mustino. Me and her had the same uh, promoter. So, me and her are doing all those media events together. And yeah. he, she was, he was also friends with Anna Marie Torres, too. So. Yeah, I met her over there. Yeah, yeah yeah that was exactly. yeah it was awesome meeting her but yeah you're right though like when you meet them all you don't really get like that conversation it's just like oh hey cool yeah you were a fighter too cool yeah i'll take a photo and then that's really it. yeah yeah i'm more it. like i don't know i like to do to help people or like give yep, them advice too. or that's how i am 
Yeah. Like anytime someone way. comes up to me, like I try to answer their questions and like be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's just me. I mean, it, it's you learn later in life that you're either born an empath or you're not. And yeah. some people lack that empathy than others. You know, me and yeah. you, we can we can feel the room. We can feel the energy. We can know yeah. or feel when somebody's actually wanting to engage in conversation. So we reciprocate it. But yeah. it, it's I mean, that's just from wis wisdom and living and experiences. But back then, you don't think about that. You know, it's just no. some fighters, a lot of other fighters, a lot of people in general don't have as much empathy as I think we have. Yeah, facts. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Um, Michael, the years, I don't know, in the amateur tournament, it was probably 2004 or 2005. Probably. It's probably the year we would have been there at the same time. Um, oh, okay. I know you asked me. Um, October, right. yeah, he was asking me what year was it we thought we were both at the same tournament at the Gloves. Probably mm. 04, 05, I'm guessing going through the archives. Okay, cool. Um, on October 6, 2012, though, you did move up in weight. We talked about the weight changes all the time, but you went to super bantamweight to become two division world champ, defeating Christina Ruiz for the vacant IFBA junior featherweights or super weight, they called it, um, yeah. world champ. Um, how did it feel to become two division champ? I had no business moving up. 118 was my bread and butter. And I know it now because I cut sugars and carbs from my diet. And I am I mean, weight falls off of me. And I wish I knew this back when I was younger. I was thinking orange juice is the most amazing thing. And that's packed with so much sugar. But yeah. we don't have, I didn't have that information. You know, I didn't have a, a $5,000 nutritionist with my- yeah with my training camp but now that i'm older i can openly admit i had no business at 122 but when i did fight at 122 i had a, i still had a lot of muscle and i i'd like to say my upper body's always been a lot bigger than my lower body i got chicken legs but i got a big back and a big upper body yeah. i've always ha had that so it carried me to be able to you know at least compete at 122 but uh i remember going in there with the bullet me and her are, are friends to, th to this day and she was the one, I don't know if you knew this, who knocked Emily Kleinfelter in a coma. I did not know that. So before she fought me, the only thing I really knew of her is she knocked Emily Kleinfelter into retirement. Uh, Emily Kleinfelter went into a coma and had to have open brain surgery and her career ended. So she had ended Emily Kleinfelter's career. So we were when we, when I fought her, we knew we were going in there with somebody who was tough as hell. Yeah. And, um, and, but because she fought Emily, which is naturally a 118, we knew, okay, moving up, she's a smaller 122. Yeah. And we knew, we, we put that into consideration. And let me tell you, Brooke, that fight, I had the worst luck leading up to the fight you could think of because none of my medicals were accepted. I tried to get, cause you know how they make you get your medicals done through a specific doctor and you yeah. pay $800, $1,200 for it. I worked at a hospital. Why would I have to pay all that? Right. But I ended, I ended up getting my neuro, my MRI and all these things, specific things done. But because three, three of them weren't done by, they were written off by the technician and they wanted it to be written off by the neurologist which is uncommon, but yeah. this is why they make you go to their doctor because they don't want all those mess ups. Right. And, and so the day before the fight, they were going to call the fight. I was, I didn't have my paperwork signed off by the correct uh, physician. I had to drive all the way out to San Pedro from uh, Maria Valley. That's a two hour drive. Yeah. It's about two to three hours. And, and Dr. Gluckman, thank you, Dr. Gluckman. He's a sweet man. He didn't have to do this, stopped from his golf tournament to go do my Nero that took him 10 minutes and signed me off. And I had to pay $800 to get that done and then drive all, all the, the way, way back. back. And this is the day before my fight, after my weigh in. I went to bed at 1 a.m. the day of the fight and got all of the paperwork and all of them thought the fight was going to be called. It was going to be canceled. All the yeah. commission didn't, didn't think I was going to get it done. And I did get it done and, um, gave them the paperwork. I had 
about four hours of sleep and I was so tired, but I was pissed. Yeah. And I remember I told my dad, I was like, I'm going to go toe to toe. <laughs> I said, I'm going to sit in that pocket and I'm going, I am not boxing and moving my legs. I'm not running. I'm too that tired road. for that stuff. I'm, yeah, I'm going toe to toe. And my dad was so mad. He was like, you can't do that. I'm like, I'm not going to toe to toe. And my dad was so mad. He was like, because, because, I didn't tell him till I was in the fight. I was in the fight and I said, he's like, Kalisha, because this is how he talks. Kalisha, he slide back, throw the jab, set up the straight right, hook over, and then step over and keep using them angles. Keep using them angles. You know, that's how my dad taught. Yeah. And and I remember I looked at him, I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> and I never, I never tell him no. But I was like, no. I'm going in the pocket. No, nope, I'm fight. I'm gonna fight her, Dad. I'm gonna fight her because I knew that I was so drained and I was so tired that if I dare backpedaled, I would look like a bitch. I would look like I'm getting slapped around the ring, and I would look <laughs> weak. I would look right. weak. So I said, no, 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 sir. We about to go in the pocket, and we, me and her, about to go. And she was the one that knocked Emily. In a in a coma. Right. So my dad was like, oh no. And I was like, I don't care. Uh-uh. Because I had a hard head. I knew. I mean, I don't know if you knew this, but in my whole career, I've never been dropped. I never. Yeah. And I've been hit where I saw purple stars and I've been dazed and my whole body went numb, but I did not go down, never went down. And I just I just went toe to toe her and I and I got the best of her. You know, going yeah. toe to toe to toe to toe with her. Toe to toe with her. And and I I don't there's a round on, on a YouTube. I hit her with a body shot and she almost fell down. She I hit her with a left hook to the body and she went and she fell down and buckled. And then I tried to get it again. I remember when I was in the ring too. I was like, oh yes, I was trying to get it. Right. Jump on her, jump on her. She went hurt. with all that I had left in the tank. I was trying to get it. And then boom, bing, the bell bing, rang. Bing. Yeah. yeah. Shay Mosey, they did a really good job. Um, promoting that fight and and it was really nice what they did. We were the main event. They did they did. That's why I love Shane. To, you know. Yeah, and you made history again that night, becoming the first female to headline for Sugar Shane Mosley Promotions. I was gonna ask yeah. you about that. Oh um, yeah. And the two division champs. So yeah, explain um, what it was like working with Shane and the promotions and all that. They were that I take back what I said about bad experiences because because. I had forgot. I forgot about moving up and going, you know, after the 122 pound title. Huh, it's been so long. Um, but they were so a pleasure to work with. They went to my Shane Mosley went to my high school at that time and we did some PR at the high school. Oh, and that was that, cool. that was so humbling. You know, yeah. this was back when he was still active and he was still yeah. doing his thing. So that was super cool. Um and then just in general, the, the Mosley tribe, what I'd say about them is they're really, really good at hyping it up. Like they're really good at like the champ, Kalisha, red carpet, yeah. you know, they hype everything up and everyone's looking and everyone's interested because of, you know, how they, how they really hyped it up. There was no favoritism. There was no sexism, sexism yeah. with the Mosleys. They just, you great champion. But we also go way back to, you know, just how you, and Nate Campbell, you know, how he helped you. He, yeah. You know how we we grow up with fighters. The Mosleys are the the people that we grew up with to where they thought that my dad was, a lot of people thought my dad was Shane or they were brothers whenever we would go to matches and stuff. So sometimes we just go along with it. Yeah. We even tra trained in uh, Mosley's camp before a fight in his cabin up in Big Bear before. Nice. I mean, yeah, we go back into this day. I still help them out for their uh, nonprofit organization. I still do a lot of work for them, for their websites and and graphic design and stuff. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, uh, we talked. You kind of mentioned this too, but in 2010, you received a proclamation from the city of Moreno Valley, um, and then in 2011, you got uh, Marshall Valley Marshall. I'm like, I'm like it's right there. You see it? There it is. The proclamation yeah right there <laughs> yes, yes. so tell us about that a little bit and what that meant to you at the time i just didn't realize how big of a deal it was i was so young and i just would listen to my dad kalisha you're going to be the mayor the the grand marshal and i was like what's that you know i just was so right. naive and we didn't have instagram where we could look up hashtag grand marshal right. and 
get a picture of it. So everything was just brand new going into things for me. And um, oh, man, Moreno Valley, I love Moreno Valley. That's I always will consider that my home because when all that happened, I was on the local TV station, Moreno Valley News, and then some college boys were following me for a documentary in Moreno Valley. But I couldn't even go to Coles or Ross without people doing selfies with me, you know, yeah. and ho hoping I don't see them My zooming in <laughs> behind me. <laughs> yeah, or me. I mean, beat up, just chilling after the gym, and, and then and then the, people just in line looking at me, staring, and then saying, "Hi, hi, Kalisha. Like you know, like yeah. I would. I'd be running outside and, and truck drivers would honk their horns and come on, Marina Valley. Everybody always said, Marina Valley. <laughs> <laughs> Even in a, in a couple of fights on YouTube, you can yeah. hear people yelling Marino. out, Marina Valley. Yeah, because this was yeah. before Kawhi Leonard uh, from the Lakers. Before he put Marina Valley on the map, I was the yeah. only one really putting Marina Valley on the map. Yeah. They were a small suburb when we moved there. I was five years old. So this 30 years ago, they were a very small town with just a lot of green land and nothing else there. If you if you saw it today, how it looked 30 years ago, yeah. you'd be like, wow. Because like they were, yeah, now it looks like a little LA is such a big city. But, yeah. So 15 years ago, I was one of the first athletes that was really putting the town on the map. And they yeah. they were just so supportive. The My city really was. I was really appreciative of that too. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so my next question, I know that um, Colin also asked a question about this. So Colin about to answer this. But in 2013, we had another common opponent, um, Olivia Garula. You fought in Canada on her hometown grounds, losing a unanimous decision over eight rounds. I also lost a decision um, to her in Canada, even though I still feel like I won that fight. But hey, it was in Canada. She was defending her WBC title. Um, but he asked, do you feel like you beat Olivia Garula? Um, that was my next question. Tell us about that. Do you feel like you won the fight? What was your experience in Canada? Well, I, first off the promoter, I have so much respect for the promoter. He was really, really trying to bring women to the forefront and promote women. And he gave us a significant amount of time to get ready for that fight. And I was scheduled to fight a girl from south america and that fell through because of a passport issue last minute and they 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 threw in olivia and we knew she was way bigger than me and we were just yeah. like you know what we 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 don't want to let down this promoter because right. he was he he put so much money and time into this all women's card and we just we were like all right let's take it we knew it was going to be a tough fight we knew she was bigger than me but now that I'm older and I'm retired, I don't really care or think too deep into about what I say about something. I say like it is, you know, I don't right. care. I just don't care. Um, and number one, I know I won the fight, but the reason why I don't make a big mess about it is because I didn't like my performance. Um, number one, in the first round, which is oddly not documented, she ran at me and with a jab to the stomach, I knocked her down. Yeah, um, it's funny because I I didn't watch the whole thing, but the other day when I was scrolling on YouTube that came across, cause I have watched it before. And I, it, like, I don't know, 30 seconds in, he's like, you know, saying how you dropped her. And I'm like, did I freaking miss that part? So I went all they, the way back to the fucking beginning. And it's not, no, it started they, after, after yeah, that. They, they took it after that. Yeah, they, they took cut it out, out or something. I don't know. I think they cut it out. But this, but this is what's so shady. And this is why they cut it out. Because she she ran at me and I went boom with a jab to the body. And she boop, dropped on the floor, both hands, everything. And when she got up, the ref slip. He called it a slip. And we were both looking. I looked back at my dad and I was like, Last I knew you get hit by a shot. I don't care how you fell down. That's a knockdown. You can't. Yeah, if your hand touches you, the you camera, get hit. Exactly. You're down. 
exactly you know and if if it was from a punch so yeah. they they went and did something and i don't even remember if they counted i think my dad said they did but i it happened so quick and and that was the end of that but i had during that time i had i was going through a lot of personal stuff in my life and i was taking hydrocortisone prescription opioids like heavy when i shouldn't have been I mean, I was very embarrassed to talk about this back then, but I'm okay to talk about this now. But I was going through a really, really ugly, bad breakup with somebody. That's why people, relationships could, could ruin your, you know, career. And I never allowed it to mess up my career. But at that time, it was so bad I wasn't sleeping. So I was taking these, you know, Norco to go to sleep like yeah. every day for two weeks before the fight. Yeah. And it showed up in my urine and they weren't going to let me fight. But I had a root canal uh, that was done. And so I used that as the reason why I was, you know, taking the, having yeah. the pain. Yeah. Taking the painkillers. And, you know, I'm very aware as an athlete, we're very aware of our body. We know yeah. our body. We know when we feel good. We know when we're intoxicated. We know when something affects our ability because of something we're doing the way we're yeah. eating the way we're sleeping we are just by nature athletes pro athletes we know what's going on with our body yeah. and and i know going into that fight and even during and after i knew that that my body was not my body i was yeah. not Kale i wasn't kalisha i yeah. wasn't as strong as i'm capable of being uh, everything was just it felt so drained and I know yeah. it was because of, you know, taking that medication and it didn't help that she was much bigger than me, but I still did enough to box her and, and not get hit clean. And she yeah. had, but a million times she had, but so many damn times yes. she I gave me knots. Yeah. I, can't I had a lot of headbutts too. Point. And she, I know she mentioned afterwards, I think she might've mentioned afterwards about me headbutting and I'm like, no, like she's you, she leaves for, she leaves with her. Yeah, it, yeah. We she had comes we had in with her head. Up. She would, yeah, she would come in just, with her head. That that was the fight poster right there with me and her. Oh, wow. Yeah. Was yours King John? Um, King John Promotions? No, no, no. Was it? No, it was someone else. He was a smaller. He was a smaller promoter trying to come up. I remember he was like a, a real small promoter. And okay. I think, honestly, I think that was the only card he did and he probably stepped away, but I, she, she had bumped me so time, so many times I had knots like, yeah. Oh my God. I've never had knots in any of my fights. Never had any knots. Even, even the fight I lost with Ava, I didn't have knots. Yeah. I had knots from skull to skull, all, you know, all fight, and it was, yeah. oh, it was, it was so annoying the way. She would do it, but I, I knew that that round that I won, it was a 10 eight. I knew that I had boxed her for four rounds. I knew that she didn't catch me clean. And I was like, okay, yeah, I won this by decision. So when they called yeah. it hers, I just was, I was angry, but I was also more angry at myself knowing that that wasn't even the best version of myself. You know, yeah. I, I had gone in there. I shouldn't have been fighting. I was doing it to please the promoter and just stick to what I agreed to do, but I shouldn't have even, I shouldn't have even been in that ring, but you know, there's only one person who covered it on YouTube. And even the person who covered it said, how did Kalisha lose? How yeah. he, he, no, there's no media from that fight, except one guy on YouTube who is talking about it round by round. And at the end of it, he, he says, well, I've got Kalisha winning this by blah, 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 two rounds. And it is, you know, it is what it is. They gave it to yeah. her in Canada, it doesn't that surprise was, you know, me. That's, that's across the board, male and female. If you fight overseas and you don't stop them nine times out of 10, especially if they're defending a title, you lost. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter how it went. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. It sucks. So I don't even, I don't even, I don't even count that on my record. What, what yeah, is that? I didn't even lose that one. I got one loss. Well, I'm sorry I brought it up, but I mean, we both fought her and we both had the same outcome. So I had, oh, to, bring, I don't care. had to bring it hey, up. You, you can bring up. I don't care. I tell people, I'm like, man, the only pain I care about is my kids, how they feel about their mama. Like, I don't get sensitive to critique or critics or anybody. Back in the day, I used to be like, 
and I could fight them back and forth. But I'm great. But I'm good. But now I'm just like I'm chilling over here. You know, I did, yeah, I did I my job. I did yeah. my job. I'm very, I'm very much so content with my career and very proud of what I've done. I am very proud of you too. Um, <laughs> Thank so you. Let's see. Michael or we'll ask. We'll do a couple more questions before I get back finish up with all we got. But um, you don't have to go, do you? Because it's been a long interview. No, 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 no. Okay. I'm done I'm with my I'm, okay. I'm on summer vacation, girl. Mm, mm. You have no idea. Oh. I know. Huh. Um, so Michael Orr chimes in and um, said, can you tell us the feeling you had coming up to during and after your fight for the WBO against Angel Gladney? Oh, my God. The feeling that I had. You're, you want to know, like, in the ring or, like, the, um, the feeling you like had the way like before, or... uh, the feeling, like, before, like, before the fight, like, probably during training, I'm assuming is what he means, and then after the fight. Um, dang. Like, you, oh. how you felt about the title fight and then how you felt afterwards. Oh, I see what you like, mean, because you, you now a world champion. I think I that's what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So, Okay. I remember leading up to because when you're little, and when I when I was ten years yeah, old, yeah, he said during camp. Uh, I see. Okay, so okay. I'll start from the beginning. When I was little, I used to watch De La Hoya on TV, and I used to look at all the people fuck, gathering around for the fight, just come on, knock them. You know, it's just such an exciting thing. You know, yeah. to the the cookout. You know, we always had the cookout mega fight on the TV. And I remember just sitting there going, that's going to be me. You know, I was a little 10 year old girl saying, that's going to be me. I'm going to, I'm going to be on the TV, knocking somebody out. I used to say that. And yeah. so when I was preparing for this fight, that's all I was thinking of was, this is it. De La Hoya, Staples Center. Wow. You know, yeah. I was just like, wow. And yeah. I was like, this is my opportunity. Just like Eminem says, you only got one shot and the opportunity yeah. comes once in a lifetime. Once in a lifetime so, yeah. Right. So everything yeah. I did, every day I trained, every time I sparred, I I trained 110%. Yeah. I remember my my when I would spar, my dad would be like, Kalisha, you can't beat these boys asses the way you are because we ain't going to have sparring. Like, you gotta learn to work. You gotta have sparring partners, right? You yeah, you gotta have sparring partners. We're not gonna, gonna come work. back. You're gonna run them off. And and but I didn't care. I did not care. I just was. It was all personal. And as a matter of fact, I remember I didn't even share with my dad half the time what I'm gonna do because usually I'd be like, "Hey, dad, you want me to knock him out with a body shot?" That's how it was when I was sparring. Yeah. I was just so you so comfortable sparring. It's different, you know. And yeah. then I would go do it, but. These time training for this, I just didn't care. Everybody I sparred, I was like, I'm gonna beat they ass so hard. Everything was personal, and yeah. and uh, even training. I had a great training camp. I had oh, I was just so mentally. I just remember thinking, you're going to need to kill me. You will need to kill me to look to win. Nothing will stop me. I will. Uh, and and even when we did our face off, she was talking, you know, mess, looking up at me, talking mess. And we actually found her because of Anna Hulatan. Remember Anna Hulatan? Yes, Anna Hulatan. Anna, yeah. right? Anna Anna Hulatan. Her coach is the one that said, "Hey, there's this tough girl named Gladney out there that's looking for a world title fight, you know." And they they help the match De La Hoya get this thing together way before, like she had like three months to prepare yeah. and um and i just i just remember when she was looking at me because she was very cocky and she was a tough girl but she was like i'm gonna beat your ass she was just looking up at me talking to me because i had the height and yeah. also too one thing about fighting is i used to love shorter fighters i love being taller i loved it like it was like buffet was, for me i, I don't think I, I never had one fight where i was taller i'm I don't, I don't never i never did i even fought a girl that was like six three <laughs> I yeah, never, you're I'm only five four better. so yeah i never the closest <laughs> one was freaking olivia i think we were like the same height she might have been a she might have been a little shorter than me but that's right me. right right but 
yeah, I just, I just remember like, I was looking at her like, you already lost, you know what I mean? Like, I right. was like, look at her. I didn't talk a lot back. Like I, I wasn't a, a shit engaging talker. with her, which, which back now I look back at it. I wish I was because you know, you ain't nobody until you tell people what you are, you know, you got to tell people right. what you are and then you are that. And yeah, I did. So I mean, we were different. Yeah, that I, way. Oh, I, yeah, I, I know, I know you did. You did. That's why I said I, I, I was so inspired by you. I, was, I admired you because you had that. Me, I was always like Manny Pacquiao. I'm just gonna do yeah. my job. I'm gonna do my job. You know, that was me. And yeah. and I just remember in my head, I was looking at her and I was just like, you already lost. You don't even know it, but I already yeah. beat your ass. Yeah, you know, I was just thinking that because it's, it's nothing was there was nothing that was going to stop me. I had trained right. so, I had never trained that hard in my life. I spent every single day, like it was, every, like everything was on the line. Yeah. Yeah, I did. And then after, and then after, oh, this is kind of messed up, but, oh man. I hate thinking about this. It makes me want to cry because, damn. Cause I'm older. So when I look back at my younger self, I think about it if it was my daughter. And yeah, yeah and I remember, dang, I kept it with Greg. Sorry. Yeah, I just, right. I, I remember when I won and I remember thinking like, this is it, I did it. Like everything's gonna be good. Yeah. I'm gonna be on, I'm gonna be fighting on TV. I'm gonna have Nike come at me, you know, I did it. And I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna defend my title on TV, all this, and and then the the first dose of reality was when, uh, <laughs> after the fight, when you go to the post fight conference, and you know how they say there was a there was a meme that was going around talking about how De La Hoya wasn't there for Ryan Garcia, yeah, after his fight, and and people could say what they want to say. De La Hoya could defend his actions all he wants, but. A fighter will feel some type of way after a fight. Yeah. Win, lose, or draw when your promoter and your team isn't behind you. And I remember getting on the podium. There's probably one or two pictures of me in a little blue sweater. But I was rushed off that stage so fast, Brooke. Like, it was like a joke. It, yeah. like, it was like, all right, Kalisha, Kalisha, and, and go up there. Okay, say, okay, come on. Come down. Come down now. Come down now and pushed to the side and just, all right, you're done, bye. And it it, it, it was just like. Like I they just, stole they stole the spotlight from you. Like you didn't even get to enjoy it. I didn't feel like a champion. I yeah. just didn't feel like, I didn't feel like I won anything. I just felt like, uh, cause Delahoya promotions, they didn't have, they didn't have any interest. And maybe it was because my dad, he was a difficult guy to deal with, but I don't blame him. I was his daughter. I was his baby girl. Yeah. And and maybe they didn't like him. I don't know what it was, but they 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 just didn't make me feel like a chap. I felt, but I will say this. Uh afterwards I went out to eat with Jack Mosley and Shane Mosley. And he Jack Mosley went over around me and he told me, You're a champ now. You know what that means? And I was like, he goes, that means you have to eat like this. And he, he took the napkin and he laid it on my lap. He said, you take the knife and you take the fork. And he just started doing something <laughs> fancy. And I remember thinking like, oh, I'm a champion now. Yeah. I have to be like proper and this right. and that. And the Mosley's made me feel so loved and so great and like a yeah. champ that, that I was. But immediately after the fight, it just, it was, it was a, it wasn't what I expected. And it, yeah. I look back at it today, like I feel bad for that girl, you know, yeah. cause I'm, I'm, I'm a mom now. So I got yeah. more sense. No, I, I get sensitive. it. I totally get I, it. I look at things so differently now, you know, and yeah. just the camp, the, the real fight is the camp. You yeah. know what I'm saying? The, the, the 10 minutes, 20, 30 minutes you get in the ring is just a fraction of oh, what the okay. hell goes on before that yeah that moment so for yeah. me i'm looking if there was a flashback i'm looking at night 110 professional fights going to usa is going to florida going to nationals all for this moment you know what i mean yeah. this moment right here and then it was just like ignored basically it 
was it was the rushing off the stage for me that just yeah. it caught me off guard and it made yeah. me feel like, like it made me, it made me realize that ain't, ain't nothing gonna change and um that's and ah uh, man but mexico you know made up for it peru made up for it denmark they all made up for it but in the united states it was just so yeah. so heartbreaking yeah. Yeah, that's why I mean, they I, oh sorry ahead. no uh that's why these those college kids that were wanting to follow me they when they realized how it was they called the documentary an empty title they called it an empty title when yeah. they found out the truth about how it was being a world champion uh as a woman back then yeah it just it wasn't it, it nothing. was it was just overlooked i mean it was definitely overlooked it was rushed and it was pointless it was really pointless um because i imagine and in delahoya ought to know better i mean imagine if he when he won his first world title if they had done that shit to him he wouldn't even, even know how to act so I but think he knows me <laughs> he remembers my name and you know what though canelo does because canelo was on the undercard and i remember he went up to me and he gave me a hug and he's like you're great you know so and then even after that when i fought in mexico his brother that looks just like him he has a brother that looks just like him ran up to me was like hey you're fighting in mexico wow and they were all excited uh yeah. to see me and this this was when canelo was not canelo he that he is today he was no, 12 and 0. Right. i believe he was 12 and 0, something like that but he he went up to me and was like wow you know and there That's are awesome. some yeah there are some people who, um, who still talk yeah. to them and they'll say hey remember kalisha west and they'll be like oh yeah she was great she was good so yeah that's um, awesome but, though that's awesome yeah. though yeah i mean yeah. i can remember when i won when i won my title it was in mexico though um against mia st john for the rematch in mexico but she was defending so i mean and it wasn't the same scenario as you but you know when you're defending like i didn't get to take the belt home so yeah. like i mean i got to have it put on me and i got to walk out with it but then i had to like immediately give it back to her so <laughs> i was like well i didn't really get to like like take photos and yeah i mean i got a couple snapshots a few but that was it but yeah so not the same scenario but yeah, yeah and i don't even i'm trying to remember i don't even remember i don't even think we were included in the post-fight conference which was weird that's weird because i don't remember wow. having the post i don't honestly don't remember no Press you conference. know, you you know what? A lot of a lot of people don't do it. a lot of promoters don't do it, but the reason why they did it was because this was pay per view and it okay. was at the Staples Center. And okay, so Sergio, maybe we didn't have one. Yeah, Sergio Mora and Shane were the headliners. So it was obviously it was, there was, it was yeah, there had yeah, and a lot of my fights, I honestly there was not really any post uh, conference. Yeah, because I'm like, I don't even remember having one. I just remember getting the belt put on me, getting to walk back to my dressing room, and then immediately having, they came and not, hey, we need the belt, give her back the belt. I mean, because she gets to keep oh, it up. And then they mail me mine. But right. yeah, I was like, but I want to go home with it. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with it. why would uh, they not? They probably expected her to win that. I'm That's sure why. they expected her to that, win. I mean, it was yeah. in Mexico. I mean, Ma Mauricio, the Suleiman was there ringside, sitting up front oh with God. his wife, like yep. talking to me as St. John. I mean, not that I, I mean, I didn't think anything of it. I mean, she had been champ, for, a WBC champ for years. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. So, I mean, I, obviously she had a relationship with the WBC and everybody that was involved, yeah. but there was literally no way they could take that fight from me. I yeah, mean, was, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm sure they just assumed that because she always, they always thought the first fight was a fluke. They thought that she got robbed in the first fight when I beat her, but I was a replacement fighter. I wasn't oh, even yeah. her opponent um, oh, wow. in Indiana the first time I fought her, and I took that fight on like four days' notice. Oh um, wow! There Look was at a. You. Well, and it was my fourth <laughs> fight. It was my fourth pro fight. She had like 50 freaking fights. They, they and I wasn't even fighting at that weight. It, I, I was a featherweight. I fought at 126, yeah. but um, Rita Figueroa, who was a stable mate of mine in Chicago, was the one that was fighting her. And it was also on the same card as Mia St. John and or, uh, Mary McGee was fighting someone on that oh, wow. card too in Indiana. But Rita got hurt 
right before, like five days before the fight. Oh, and wow. I was, you know, I was always in the gym. So I was like, well, I'll take the fight. I'll go up and wait. I'll just weigh in with my clothes on. Like, I didn't want to, it was a big opportunity. And I was right, like, yeah. I just want to name on my record. Like, I, I, right. I got nothing to lose. I was 3-0. and mm -hmm. I think I was 3-0 and when I fought her. But so I went in as a replacement fighter on four days notice. I think it was four days notice. And she, it was so funny because I only had, I think I was like 10 and two as an amateur. I only had like, or, or 12 and two, 12 and two. I only had like 15, 16 amateur fights. I did not have an extensive amateur career. Um, but when we did the first press conference, that's all she kept talking about was how I had all this amateur experience. So like, don't underestimate her. Like, you know, she's coming here to win, even though she's a replacement fighter. And I'm like, bro, like I had 15 fights. Like if you could add all my fights up together and you're like, I drew the amount of fights I have. I started fighting. Did you say that to her? Yeah, I was like, oh, what God. are you talking oh, about? God. I was like, what year, like, what year was this? What year was this? God, oh, the God. first time I fought her must have been like, 2007 ah that was right in the I beginning my record, like 2007 because the rematch was in 2009 but so probably like 2007 but right yeah, she just like she's got extensive amateur career and i'm like dude i had like 15 amateur fights and i've had three pro fights and you had she had like probably 50 <laughs> fights at the time yeah and i was yeah, like yeah. what are you talking about like experience i said aside from the fact that i'm a featherweight coming up to lightweight Two weight I classes remember. higher. I weighed in with my clothes on, keys in my pockets, like because you can only be within so many pounds. Right. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. I, I beat her on the decision, and she just cried that it was I was. She got robbed. I was the local fighter. I'm like, I'm not even from here. I'm from <laughs> Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my dad told Indiana. me. I remember my dad and, and said he was wearing one in a million was the promoter and she was wearing one in a million on her outfit. I'm like, bro, this fight is for you. Like you're the whole draw to this card. <laughs> what are you talking about? You know, I, I, I love, favorite. I love yeah. how you kept it real with her. My dad. I did. He, I, did. He, I was like, I remember he told me too. He said, that's the girl. He always would refer to you as that's the girl that retired Mia. <laughs> Because you know how there's always that one fight that happens that the, the fighter is not the you know, same fighter. It's, it's funny. Afterwards. I mean, I will still, yeah, I will still talk to Mia to this day. I mean, I have nothing against her or whatever. I think she's a great she's person. Sweet. She is a she's phenomenal a boxer. She had a, a hell of a career. Yeah, um, yeah. I did she say is. some things in some interviews that were probably inappropriate. I shouldn't have said, but whatever. <laughs> in the moment you say it. Um, but... I mean, still to this day, I, there was an article, I don't know, probably five years ago, I came across and she had put on, they had at, were asking her about her career and different stuff. And they must have asked like something about like, what's the one thing that always like bothers you or that like you just can't get over or whatever oh, in uh -oh. your career. And she, I, she put in there that losing to me twice was like the worst thing about her career and I was like out of I mean she what is she retired with like 60 something fights I mean I don't even know but out of all those experiences I was like I me losing to me twice was like the worst thing that like can't get over in her career that was in her career. <laughs> she sees your face in her sleep <laughs> yeah I was like I, I don't know but I mean kudos to her hats off great career and all that stuff but I was I mean it kind of brought me to reality a little bit that maybe I was a little bit better than I gave myself credit for if I can have that impact on somebody's That's, career yeah it's funny because I think I don't know if you know who Stella Nyoff is do you know who she is I know the name yeah. remember her yeah. Stella, Stella was uh, the amateur queen. She had 16 titles in uh, USA's and she was the one everybody was, you know, in the amateurs. Yeah. Stella and I, Stella and I. Yeah. And I, I fought her and I whooped her butt and she did not respect me because I was always the girl that like just didn't, like I had 10 losses and I lost 
when it counted in yeah. those amateurs and it was usually because of favoritism but whatever yeah and um there was a freaking she i fought her and i beat her up so bad i was her last right she didn't fight after me and she came from a hundred amateur she was four and oh she was like we we thought she was gonna go on to at least try for another title and, and yeah yeah hey like that the, i guess we all have that one we definitely all have that one yeah yeah um let's see tony issue says it's morning what's well, morning for him 2 a.m here in england any oh wow wow well thank you for joining us tony from england um any predictions on the katie taylor versus chantel cameron on saturday night in ireland oh um, i have a prediction um i'm sure that you have a prediction too we'll see if our predictions i want to hear i want to hear i, I want to hear i it probably is. I want to hear you. Okay. Uh, my prediction is, uh, is Katie Taylor by decision um, because I think Sh Chantel Cameron, I think, is a really great fighter. She doesn't have the experience and hasn't been in the ring with the um, level of competition that Katie Taylor has been in with yet in her career. Um, so I don't think she's ready for that level of competition that Katie Taylor is going to bring. Um, I do know that Katie has had some really tough fights lately. Um, I do believe she beat Amanda Serrano. I know a lot of people think that's questionable, but if you go back and really watch the fight, Katie Taylor won she, the fight. Yeah, Amanda she had one more clean round. shot. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She had that one great round where she almost stopped her, but she didn't. And yeah. Katie came back strong, very strong after that. Um, Katie, ha I think she's, she's shown almost all that she has to give probably at this point in her career. So people are starting to figure her out. But Katie has that grit that we've been talking about this whole time, yeah. uh, that determination and that heart. Um, and she will go and she will literally give it all on the line. You'll have to literally you'll have to carry her out on a stretcher. Um, yeah. She's not going to quit no matter what. So I think, but I don't think she has enough power to stop Chantal. Right. But right. Katie Taylor, Taylor, unanimous decision. Easy. Right. Mine is similar to yours, but how much, how old is Chantel? Because she's younger, but I don't know yeah, for sure. She's, she's, old, but she's younger. And, and here's the thing. I mean, I'll be honest with you. There, her management is doing this too soon. I, I truly believe that they're trying, I mean, strategically on paper, you would think that she would be the one who can break Katie. But it, to, to me, like you said, I have not seen a performance that shows Katie is coming down that hill. And she, yeah. I don't think she's anywhere near it. I think she'll peak at 36, 37. Yeah. She, how old is Katie now? Because I thought we were the same, or she was younger. I think than she's me. about the same age as you. I thought Mid 30s? She was, I thought she was younger. I don't know. I forgot. Maybe that. early 30s. Michael, I'm yeah. sure knows. Michael, yeah. how old is Katie Taylor? She, early she's 30s. younger than. 32. She, he says she's 32. Right. And I, and she's younger than me. I remember she was a little bit younger than me. And I just feel like, like the way that she, Oh, okay. Oh, so she's 36. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So she's, and the other old. girl's 32. Wow. Okay, I always thought she was, I always thought Katie was younger than me for some okay, reason. So Cameron must be 32. Okay. So Cameron's 32. And, but in her career, she's just not as, She's not up there like Katie is. Katie's career, it's like you have a superior background and then you have somebody who just doesn't have that same background. So the yes. it's it's not even a it's not even a in my opinion, it's not even a coin toss of what's yeah. gonna happen. It's just not it's not a matchup that I feel is a big threat for Katie. I think the no. girl's gonna come in and give her a hard time. Yeah. like er, early, early on early. yes yeah. early on because that's how she fights and that's a job. lot of all fighters who don't have that wisdom in the ring and that that years and amateur background of experience oh, goes yeah. along exactly her boxing iq isn't on katie's level so she's gonna make it look like a, an entertaining matchup but katie's gonna end up dominating and finishing the, the rounds and and just stack them in and I, like you said, I think unanimously, I honestly think it might even be a later, if it depends on what Katie we have, because I feel like Katie's moody. Like I've seen yeah. some of her fights. She's and different. I'm like, she's different. She don't like, bring it all, all the time. Right. 
I feel like she be pressing and then pressing on the gas and letting off the gas, pressing yeah. off the gas, and she she'll does. do stuff. She always rises to the occasion and goes yes. just above. Sometimes I wish Katie was just always pedal to the metal every fight yeah. because if she, if she was, I feel like she'd have a lot more stock. Uh, yeah, TKO I than she has. I yeah. agree with that one hundred percent. I feel like she only, she only gives just an, a little bit more than her opponent. I don't know if it's that maybe. She's kind of like similar to you where like maybe she don't want to embarrass them or make them look really bad. So she just <laughs> does enough. I hate so, like, I hate that that I was like, no, I was I admit it. Yep. But yes, her combinations and her hand speed is freaking phenomenal. The the freaking combinations that she throws when she lets her hands go is yeah. freaking crazy. And nobody sees but it. She doesn't either. do it all the time. Mm -mm. She's moody. She's a moody. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she I moody. totally agree. I think if she would give if us, if we get, more, she'd stop get a the lot. Best, exactly. If we get the best version of her, which I've seen, I mean, her fight, she pulled everything out of her ass. I mean, with Amanda, I think that yeah. she was doing. I mean, any other, if this girl, she go in there with the same, you know, type of grit that she had. Yeah. She go. I think not. She could stop TKO her. her. Exactly. Yeah. I think, but. And again, I do see her winning that decision. Yeah. She got it. She's just so, and Amanda hits hard. Yeah. So I don't see this girl. And she's a southpaw. At all. Yeah, yeah, at all. And I don't think, I don't think that it's a good time in that. I mean, with women, you take what you can get. I get it. But I don't, if I'm, I'm thinking about from a manager's perspective. Yeah. I, I wouldn't match my girl up with Katie right now. That's just no. what I. I just wouldn't do that right now. I if mean, I were, she's undisputed. I think she won undisputed beating Mary McGee. I'm pretty sure is how she got undisputed because they did that like undis that they they did that like road to undisputed championship. Okay, and it was like uh, a single elimination. I think mm. I'm pretty sure. Michael, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that she got undisputed uh, beating Mary McGee in that little tournament thing that they put on over there overseas in the uk but that can, could, that can build someone's confidence for sure yes I mean, mary's, like, mary's a great yeah was, mary's a great boxer but i don't think she's the level of a katie taylor it, you know no you've got you've got calipers of fighters and i don't like i want to say what is um mary's amateur background she had a because, pretty good amateur background. She we fought amateurs at the same time. She had a pretty good amateur background. Well, I mean, you know, I don't know if you remember, but she was 17 and 0 when she when I fought her and I gave her her mm -hmm. first loss in Indiana. Mm -hmm. And that well, was But well, she's had like since I beat her, I want to say she's had like four or five losses since then, but almost all of them were like a big jump in competition, mm -hmm. like higher mm -hmm. ranked fighters, and they were title fights. Right. She fought McGee I for just, the IBF World Super Lightweight title and WBC World Super Lightweight. Okay. Yeah. Well, somehow, isn't she undisputed at Super Lightweight, though? If I remember right. Or maybe she's only got a couple titles. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Okay. I'm just going to be bluntly honest because I think about myself and how I fought at 122, and I went as big as 126. I just don't feel like Mary is at a good weight. I don't think that's her weight class. I really, so if somebody Caskill went, fight, probably went, a Caskill fight. Yeah. I don't. I feel like she would have. Mary McGee should be at a smaller weight class. And I, and yeah. and you know, like I said in the beginning, we suck down. We suck, 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 suck down. And and like if Mary were to come down one twenty two. You know, smaller. Weight. I don't know if she can make that weight, though. You don't think so? When I see her, though, when I see her in her best, like in her best shape that I've seen her, I question the number of. I'm telling you, carbs and sugars, carbs and. Well, sugars. I mean, granted, I think she definitely has the weight to lose. I mean, she could lose weight. I mean, I'm not saying she's fat or by any means anything. Don't take that the wrong way, people. Um, there is areas that I think that she definitely could drop weight in if she had a great nutritionist, but yeah. she also has that bigger bone structure similar to like me. Um, and she is taller than me, quite a bit taller than me. If I remember right, three or four inches taller than me. So 
And I, I fought her at 135. Six. She's 5'6". Yeah, I, I fought her at 135. Yeah, yeah. Um, I look at I look at legs. I'm gonna be honest with you. I look at legs. Yeah. You have you have the thighs. You have what we call tree trunk legs. Okay. Yeah. You've got a solid lower lower half of your body. Yeah. She's got runner legs. She's got. Yeah, she does. She yeah. has me. I just I just know because what I know you know you know I'm in med school. I have to I look it up, Michael. Let's look up while you're looking up stats over here michael at What's least the lowest weight mary ever fought did mary ever go lower than 135 or 130 at least 126 she did. Her, it should be her weight class even. yeah or even because 122. yeah because like i'm telling you brooke the amount of information that i know about what sugars and carbs does to your body and how weight drops and you feel good and you have nothing but muscle when you see those people competing you know and they're ripped and they yeah. wait it's because they know how to eat they know what to eat they know what nutrients yeah. do to their body and and you're not getting sucked you're not getting drained when you're eating the right foods you're actually yeah. fueling your muscles with what it needs to be strong and you yeah. know you should see when these men fight you know when you see canelo fight you see abs abs cut yeah. cut cut and a lot of women we retain carbs water and we if we're not eating the right foods i mean i don't know i feel like she lowest should have been was she's ever fought was 133. ah yeah so feather, 135 basically but yeah i see your point though i see your point like i i just know when i think of like katie i just think of a bigger girl and and with yeah, girls, we, we, we fluctuate we fluctuate you we know do. what i mean we, we do, do. So I gotta get, I just, my, I gotta get yeah. myself back in shape after having. I did too. I've been lazy. I'm, I've been lazy. I'm trying to lose. I'm, my goal is 30 pounds before uh, the the whole thing. Yeah, I didn't make that. I didn't make any weight loss before the Hall of Fame last year. I would like to before the one this year, but um, I don't <laughs> have the motivation. I don't have the motivation. I'm just tired all the time. Like I'm just Sugar, tired. Car, look, 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 look. I'm gonna teach you something. Okay, without working out and without without training or running nothing i ate low 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 carb low 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 sugar and i got down to 139 138 and i never saw that my entire career working out every day because yeah. orange juice is bad for you milk is bad for you i don't make me fall down this rabbit hole of how much sugars are in everything and when you cut those sugars Girl, I'm telling you, I wish I knew the knowledge and I feel Girl, better. Just I sleep text better. Me. Text me. You text you follow me. what I tell you to eat, you will your weight will fall off okay. of you. I got you. So you uh, you text me my meal plan. You we'll do this off air, but you text me my meal plan and we'll see if we can both get down before the inductions in October. I'll be there. It, it's hard. It's hard, but you're strong minded because you're a boxer and you can do it. It isn't I can if I broke it sugar is a drug it is an addiction I agree you're gonna with that. your body's gonna withdraw your skin is gonna smell different all of this happened to me all of this happened to me it's really weird but but i i was able to get past that and i just i was at once the biggest i got was 178 and then i started sitting at 160 165 and i said i gotta change i had a stroke remember i had a stroke yes i remember and I was, and all this happened and i ended up uh, cutting sugar and carbs and I got down to one I got down to 150 comfortable and I it was hard for me to break that but I I started creating recipes with almond uh flour and just go real in with the low 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 carb low sugar it just fell off fell off fell off fell off and I just was one next thing you know at 130 I was like whoa it's just I need to start doing we can fight I'll, tomorrow no i was sleep i know i you know i used to walk around at 150 before every fight i walked around at i can't even i can't even picture that yep i walked around at 150 all the time i'll show you a picture of me i just i was always because i ate i i would i would think i was eating healthy and i'd have a, a sandwich a turkey yeah. sandwich but those that bread that you're eating horrible it's horrible for you and yeah. then the orange juice packed with sugar milk packed with sugar minute any juice is packed with sugar you're supposed to only drink water 
Mio if you want some flavor and almond milk. You know what I mean? Everything is packed with carbs or sugar. I when know. you eat, eat a meal, you're supposed to have this little tiny bit of rice. But everybody wants their mashed potatoes, their, <laughs> their macaroni and cheese, and then their rice. And that's already three carbs. Yeah. You might as well just eat 10 Snickers. Like, that's how bad it is. That's how bad it is. Imagine. I can only imagine. Yeah. Oh, my God. Um, let's see here. Angie, welcome in, girl. I saw your um, comment. You just got done working out. I hope you had a good workout. Um, I did not overlook you. Um, Angie, um, Kalisha, you'll meet Angie at the induction. She was there last year. She's an amateur fighter um, that I met last year, and we've been talking ever since. Great girl. Um She'll be there again this year. So you'll get to meet Angie past more at the inductions. Oh, cool. um, Michael, I don't know. I, I told you the year 04, 05, probably. I'm not really sure. Michael, your prediction is pretty much the same, though, as the Katie Taylor fight. Track star run laps all around, you think? She's going to be running and then throwing yeah. punches while she pauses? She'll be fighting timid. But see, that that's what I'm talking about, about this gas pedal that she has. Yeah. It's she, like she, she hit or miss. It's yeah, on and off, on that. and off. It's I've like a sputtering like car. That. Like when you're going to start your car and it's like. And you're I forgot for it what over. fight. I forgot what fight it was, but I remember watching it and she just was the superior boxer. She was better. She was greater. And I was, I remember watching her and I was so mad because I was like, stop it. Like she would, just she'd go, go get it. She'd get in there and she'd go. Doo -doo 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 -doo, and then she'd just back and off. Back off. And it's like, and I'm like yes. what? you're you're amazing you're great what are you stopping for you're giving these people way too much respect and yeah. i'm like you could have you could have tko this girl but it's confidence i question yeah. i question her upbringing who who the heck gave this or, or took away this girl's confidence she needs to be like ali because she's got the skills yeah. she's got the talent she's got the yeah. ambition she has the background she has the resume to be the female ali but she the, gotta have the mental and I can, yeah. I could see through people. I mean, I I feel like I can. I've always had this weird capability of being able to read people. She just her confidence in the ring. I just wish she yeah. had more ring ring confidence. Like, come on, get cocky, girl. You can yeah, do it. Yeah, bring it. It's brilliant. I know. Tony, yeah. um, I appreciate you so much for joining us from overseas. I appreciate you, especially in the middle of the night. You gotta be tired. Appreciate you hanging in there. <laughs> I know. Uh, Michael, yes, I totally agree. Yeah, she won the titles from Jessica McCaskill to become undisputed. I remember as soon as you said that. Um, okay. Last opponents. Let's see. Uh, McGee. Okay, yeah. McGee. Um, who's Charlie Giles? Is that a girl? Oh, that was the supervisor. Katie's last five, uh, Jonas, Han, Shirapova, Shira, Shirapova, I don't know who that is. Serrano, I probably should. And Kara Bahal. Okay. Well, Which good, Serrano yeah. Was. Yeah, but they don't, yeah. Cameron's just, it doesn't have the same. Um, she hasn't the been same through a lot of test yet. fights. Right. Yeah. She hasn't had really big tests. If anything, this is going to be her, her biggest test fight. It's going to put her in that category of fighting, you know, superior yes. boxers like like taylor so totally you and uh, yeah michael you food. can drink a day's calories and not even know it Kalisha exactly knows, but oh, you exactly. can exactly um let's see i still have so many questions that we haven't got i'm like sitting here like oh my god like should i just skip all these and like go to the end i, I don't want to <laughs> keep it all night long <laughs> i'm, I'm sorry gosh. i talk a lot it's my fault i do I am a child. No, I mean, I'm fine with it if you're fine with it. I just don't want to make you stay here any later than you want to. It's so funny. Um, my air, my AirPods are on 5%. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, oh, my God. I, I talked my AirPod life out. They were at 100% when I started. You drained them. You drained them. Yeah, I did. Um, oh, my oh, shoot. <laughs> I dropped my, my mirror. Um. Well, tell us, okay, so in 2018, you did announce, November 2018, you announced the, your retirement from boxing. Um, I did, I did. Tell us a little bit about that, how hard of a decision that was, and I know it was extremely hard for me to transition back into everyday life. Um, I retired after having my second daughter um, just because I didn't want to, I just, 
I had won the title. I was getting robbed of title after title after title, fighting the best out there. And I had already, you know, I had the WBC. And after I got pregnant with my second one and coming back, I had came back after my first one and in the amateurs. And yeah, it was very hard. And I was just like, now I got two kids. I need to think about like, this is dangerous. Like I really should just be a mom. So that's kind of like where mine came from, but tell us a little about your decision and, and your transition back into just normal everyday life without boxing. You know, this interview has gone on for so long that I doubt who I would assume will watch it would, would tune in for this long. So I'm going to tell you the truth of everything about why I retired and I've, I've said it before, but it just didn't get picked I up. Had, but I was it not didn't gonna... get, yeah, it's okay. It didn't get picked up in Google. So that's good. But anyways, um, I don't mind. I don't mind telling the story. Um, cause I've already said it and it's a matter of people researching, but this has been such a long interview. Um, so gosh, ah, uh, I remember my next goal was the WBC and I had gone to a poker tournament with the WBC cares and I did an autism awareness uh, tournament. And I and I was finally at a, at a stage in my career where I was super confident and I was ready to be that, that star with my confidence because I lacked a lot of confidence in a lot of my fights. And yeah. I was ready to be just as great in my sparring positions because people will tell you, I, you know, I, I feel like I performed better sometimes in my sparring that I did, but it's all mental. It really is. Yeah. You're, you're still the same fighter. You still could do the same things, but it's just mental. But I was finally confident. I didn't care anymore. Even a, a reporter told me when I fought Christy uh, Simmons, um, wow, I could see that you're a confident fighter and you, you're you going, you're going and you're you're just more aware. You have that, that maturity. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm take that WBC title. I was like, I'm going to call out Anna Marie Torres and then I'm going to call out um, Amanda Serrano. And you know what I mean? I was like ready to go and, and just yeah. rack out and cash out uh, on my career. And um, man, I was sparring this kid who was way bigger than me. And he hit me with a, he hit me with a, a punch and I heard something pop in my neck. And I didn't think anything of it, but it hurt so bad in my neck. And I went to sleep and I, when I woke up, I couldn't even lift my head. I had to hold my head and lift it to get out of bed. And for the first time I told my dad, hey, I can't go to the gym. And I've never done that in my career. I've never said, I'm sick, I can't go. I went sick, crying, always showed up. Yeah. But the pain was so bad that I couldn't go to the, I could not go to the gym. And I just was like, I don't know what the heck, you know, happened. Like, I, I just think something popped or something. So he said, you got a stiff neck. You, you, you turn too quick. You know how people do that. They yeah. turn too quick. And um, I don't even know if you know, but I talk like this because I still have the pain today. And I was like, um, I hope that's all it is. So I took five days off and it was still there. But I just was like, whatever. And then so I went in, I started getting in the groove, and then I, I went and I sparred again. And but this time, I didn't even really get hit. And I was like, oh, like it was so painful. I couldn't even yeah. look left or right. So I called my advice nurse at 10 o'clock at night after the gym. And I was talking to the advice nurse and I told her what happened. I said, hey, I was sparring a week ago. I heard a pop and this, and I was telling her everything. And, um, and I knew that I always had this crack in my neck ever since my car accident that I had in 2010, right after I won the world title. I was in a huge car accident that was on the news. And ever since that car accident, I had this pop in my neck, pop in my neck. Well, you know, fast forward eight years later, after the car accident, she goes, you need to go to ER right now. And I was like, what, why? She goes, matter of fact, can you pull over and have somebody take you to the ER now, like based on my symptoms and everything I said. And I was like, oh man, are you kidding me? Is it this serious? You know what I mean? So right. I had, I had, um, I remember I just, I had gone, I said, no, I'm not going to pull over. I could drive myself. I'm fine. Y'all overreact, drove the ER. 
in my boxing shoes with my, you know, the up to here yeah. boxing shoes, sweaty yeah. after sparring. And, and I told him everything. I said, it hurts to stand. They put me in a neck brace immediately. And then they got me checked in the ER really quick. They sent me back for MRI scans, all that. And then I remember laying there and the doctor came out and he said, you have an, you have an osteophyte like this big that's pro protruding from your vertebrae C7 that's pushing on your spinal, you know, nerves and tissue and everything. And that's why your whole left side goes numb. And that's why you can't move because of all the inflammation. And he was just like, it's almost like there was a previous injury there. And, and you have like a 70, an 80 year old neck, you know, like as if, cause that's how, you know, arthritis comes over time. Yeah. And he was like, but your neck is like your age. And I remember I was like, all I was thinking was, but I could still bog. You know, I was like thinking like, like, oh, right. So it was, I want to, they had to leave me. I had to get admitted because they were going to do surgery. They wanted to do surgery, which I wish, I, I wish they did because I've been in pain ever since. And I, and I, uh, but my doctor didn't approve it. My doctor was like, she's too young. We don't want to do that. Let's we're going to try to do alternatives before we try to get her into surgery. Of course. And so I remember when I was getting ready to get discharged, I looked at the neurosurgeon and I was like, um, so I'm a professional boxer and when can I return? Yeah. And he, and he, in the most kindest way, he said, he said, he basically said, if I would be, if I would sit here and tell you that it is okay to box, I would be doing myself injustice because of the dangers of, of your injury. And you can possibly go, you can possibly become paralyzed. Yeah. And he just, he kept it real with me, you know, and I got a second opinion and a third opinion because I was stubborn and everyone said the same thing. They said, because of the nature of your sport, your neck, you know what I mean? Can go back. Or... Yeah, you're 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 gonna continue to puncture those nerves, and it's gonna continue to get inflamed, and you're gonna you can cause permanent damage. It can get really yeah. bad for you. And so, it was like one of those things where I was like, "Wow!" I was like, "Okay, this is it. Like, this is gonna be the end of my career." Crazy thing. The crazy thing. I mean, I was being safe. I was protecting myself. Yeah. A month later, I was pregnant. <laughs> While I was sparring the whole time, I was eight weeks pregnant. While I was sparring and fighting and getting MRIs and legs, I was pregnant. Did and they I do x-rays? Are you pregnant? How did they not take a pregnancy test when you went to the hospital? I said that. I said I can't believe that they, they put always me an MRI always do without tests. doing exactly, and they didn't. And the whole time I was pregnant. And what's crazy is, like I said, is I was being real safe, like yeah. real safe when it comes to babies. Babies were never on my agenda. Like you were ever in the of your career. Exactly ever. And I mean, I'm, when I tell you, it didn't contraceptive didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> The one time a little bit of a boob happened, it didn't work. And so, and so, uh, I just remember, um, when I was pregnant, I was, I didn't want to tell nobody. I was ashamed. I was sad. I was depressed. I was angry. I was unhappy. I was confused. As, as a matter of fact, I had what was called pregnancy related depression. And I had rashes all over my body from anxiety, depression. And I was just paranoid of, of, you know, starting life. And I, I was with my husband, he's the father, but, um, I was just so sad because you go from going for WBC world champion to pregnant to mama, to, 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 to you're forced to retire. You got a permanent injury, you, all of that at once, like yeah. a train, you know, yeah. it, it was like a train. And so I just was so confused but the first thing i said is go back to school that's all i said is uh, the first thing i told myself is just go back to school just go back to school like that's all i told myself keep keep yourself busy 
yeah. do something, do something. Because the neck injury, I was having a hard time trying to figure out what I wanted to do. I couldn't do jujitsu. Yeah. I enjoyed jujitsu. I couldn't well, fight. If you had done the surgery, would that have made it so you could fight? So or I what talked was the point of the surgery. I talked to my doctor about that, and she told me that because of the location of where it's at. Yeah. If I were to have surgery, one or two things will happen. Number one, it'll come back because the body tries to restore itself. No matter what they shave down, because yeah. that's what they would do. They would shave down the vertebrae that's that's protruding, um, the osteophyte. And then your body would attempt to resurface what's missing. Yeah. Or you will not be able to turn your head left or right. So okay. I had I had lived in pain. And, and this is what's crazy is when you stop boxing, everything shows times 10, all the underlying illnesses that you have when you stop boxing, you start getting arthritis here. So the, the pain that I had was even worse when I was inactive. Yeah. But when I cut sugars, I very rarely have flare ups or pain there. It's not, it's not nowhere near as bad as it was. And that's because sugars are an inflammatory and it was an anti-inflammatory. Right. So I, it helped a lot with the pain. And she just said it wasn't, she said the people who have the surgery, depending on which one they have, it's, it never, the surgeries that they offer are not, they don't have a high success rate and you're too young for all that. So they've altered my diet. She said, eventually you might end up having it, having it because of how young you are with this type of an injury, but you don't want to, because it'll come back, it could, it could probably come back. You want to wait till later in life yeah. to, to go to go that route and i never got a second opinion i was even contemplating a second opinion and doing one last comeback like two years ago i'm not gonna lie i was like i was like man let me go down to san diego and see what the neurosurgeon says down there and try yeah. to see what they say but when i talked to i actually did i talked to another a neurosurgeon and they just because of, when i ended up having a stroke that just changed everything for me. It yeah. really, I, I was like, you know what? I, I, I looked at life differently because Brooke, I'm telling you, I, I wasn't able to talk my whole, it, it was very traumatizing. And I, and I remember I grabbed my husband's arm and I tried to tell him what to tell my kids in case I die. Cause I didn't know if I was having a heart attack or blood clot. I didn't know what was happening to me. And I grabbed him and I was like, and I, and I couldn't spit out words. I was like, listen to me. That's how I was talking. I could yeah. not speak. Yeah. And when that happened, I said, you know what? Forget it. I'd never even cared to get a second opinion. I said, life is precious. Life is short. I saw death and I stared straight at death. And well, and you've been through a lot. I mean, not just with your stroke, but your husband wasn't doing well for a while. I mean, yeah, double pneumonia. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So a lot of things that kind of makes you like really take in the moments yeah, where yeah. You're, it's like, it's like a wake up call. Oh, yeah. And then my boys, um, my, my boys, it's like, yeah. I mean, so it was kind of like fate. I mean, you stopped yeah. boxing, but you were pregnant. So, I mean, and you went through a whole lot of stuff. We all have a, a really hard time readjusting to just life after boxing. Yes, I think. Yeah. Well, and I've been I was athletic my entire life. But see, I didn't box my whole life. I didn't start boxing till I was 21 after the military when I got out of the army is when mm -hmm. I started boxing. Um, yeah. But that was a big part of my life. Like I worked and went to gym, work, gym, work, gym, like that's how it is. Yeah. Um, and I, I had my one daughter then. But after I had the second one and I was just like, you know, well, shit, I can't go. I don't want to do this now. Like, again, with two kids hauling them to the gym and like, it it's was hard. just a lot. Um, but yeah, it, it's hard going from being so athletic and so busy and just always doing sports and, and activities. And then mm -hmm. to like, just being a mom, a normal, yeah, a normal, a normal life, a yeah. normal life. A normal yeah. life. Absolutely. It's, it's a, it it's wild. definitely a hard adjustment. That's for sure. It I mean, it I would exchange them for anything, but it's it's hard to to just do that. And yeah. then, like for me, like my kids, I don't know why, but they're not like super athletic. 
they're not so they don't try to do boxing or anything like that oh, like my fur my oldest one she did um she played like all the sports all the way up until like middle school and then she started doing step so <laughs> she quit everything else because step was all year round so uh -huh. she just did step all the way through school so that and i'm that i mean that's not like i mean it's a sport but it's not like sports you yeah, know I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she had nothing to do with boxing, but I think she was in the gym like since she was a baby, like all the way oh, up wow. to retired. Um, but yeah, and one nothing to do with boxing, nothing. That's funny. My yeah, and my one, two boys. Oh, do they? Sorry. My middle one is on eleven. She just turned eleven. She really wants to learn to box. Now she would definitely be a fighter. Um, my husband's just not ready yet because she wants to learn it and do it, but he don't think she's mentally ready for it yet but i'd say probably within the next year or so we'll start working with her um she she'll, does she'll want get, how old is she 11. she just turned 11. she'll she'll get there that's what happened to yeah. me i'm a, i'm living proof man that yeah. i would i wasn't um, meant I mean, to she really really, I really, really wants to learn but i remember it's like she wants to do it but but like more like for fun though and she says she wants to do competitions and the sparring and all that stuff and i know she would she's that type of kid yeah. but like she, she wouldn't like if she got frustrated she would be like yeah whatever and so he's like i can't do it with like my kid because i would be too frustrated with her so she's got to get there mentally first she's um, got to be she got to want to do it she yeah. got to really and then our son he yeah. he'll be two in june so and he hits stuff all the time but yeah so he may be two but i'm sure your boys your boys i know from social media your boys are pretty rough so they probably oh, are yeah. into that type of thing well it's funny because my oldest he's a he's a genius he's a baby genius and he's very logical he's <laughs> the type he's the type that'd be like but why are we going to hit one another he just you know what i mean you could tell it's but my youngest oh yeah. my goodness he's a knucklehead and he's mean yeah and he, that's I, how i, I, I have him going i have him going he got the right mentality to box and i'm like oh lord i probably have a little boxer right here so i started teaching him a one and a, a one and a two and he he looks at the camera like this like if if grandpa calls him or anybody calls him he goes and then i'm like oh cam say hi to grandpa he goes he's two you know and i don't i don't push anything on my kids i love to see them blossom and see but this this kid he looks at me and he'll look at the couch and then look at the table and then jump up a hundred miles per hour and jump from the table to the couch and yeah. scream. And then he, he goes, eh, and his nickname is Cam the man. Cause his name is Cam. Oh, man. And yeah. the, the daycare, the daycare saw in his paperwork, I put his nickname Cam the man. And they were like, oh, we know why he's the man. Cause he walks yeah. around like he's six foot tall. <laughs> he's two years old. I'm like, I oh man. Yeah, he might our, be a boxer. our son, yeah, is Mason, but he, he'll be two in June. But yeah, I we've got the double end bag and the heavy bag out in the garage. And yeah, he'll he always wants to hit it. So he'll walk by. So I'll be like, shh, shh. so then he'll be like, psst, psst. <laughs> <laughs> so crack up with. yeah, start him early, start him early. <laughs> yeah, and he hits everything in the house. So he probably will yeah. be rough too, but Might we'll be a see. Good place for him too. Yeah. <laughs> I would push my son if he wanted to do it more so than my daughters i mean i to be honest with you never wanted my daughters to want to fight oh wow well be i mean because of all the bullshit that i went through i was gonna say i don't blame you i don't blame you i don't blame like, you it's fucking depressing yeah i know i don't blame you it like like i'm 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 crying the that we went self, through so I and like yeah. all the bullshit that we had to go through like yeah, i just yeah. i don't wish that on anybody I mean, I know it's changing and it's evolving. So, I mean, I, I would never I, tell them no, but I wouldn't be but like, they, do you want a box? They, do you want a box? Do you want a box? Like they have to come to me and be like, mom, mm -hmm. I want a box. So like now my and, daughter and wants they, You know, these, these girls, they say, oh, it's changing. It's, you know, but if, I, when, tell me when y'all fighting for a million dollars because the money's there and it, it's still so chauvinistic and it's still sexist. It's still not where There's it should be. There's only been what two fighters that have made. Oh yeah, all that shit's still there. The sexism, the chauvinistic, all that stuff. Is and still and there. you know, you can have a hundred thousand followers, but 
you're still fighting for eighty or a hundred thousand dollar per I mean look, I yeah. do the math. I'm very I'm I'm very statistic. I, I go based I'm very logical. I do the math and with a salary of a nurse in one year I make what your purse was that you made one in one year. You have to think about that. Yeah. You have to look out for yourself. Yeah. You know, if if you're fighting for a hundred thousand, I don't wanna hear it. it you need to be you need to fight for more. You need to demand more. You need to ask for more. You yeah. need to put your, you need to go get Nike, get Adidas, fight for these endorsements. You need to be a pro because you need to be your biggest manager, investor, yeah. and, and put yourself out there, splash That's your true. face, network the room. I mean, I'm, I hate to use this as an example, but Kim Kardashian is a prime example of somebody who networks every room she walks in and look at them now they are the modern day gucci family because of their network your yeah. network is your net worth Absolutely. these these females some some females got to do it somebody's got to do it you know layla didn't do it no a female's not doing it you know not ali in it ali this shit. you gotta yeah you gotta put your fit you know clarissa's the only one who's really trying to do it where she's yeah. making herself a prize fighter of fight, being a million dollar investor there's been what three i think three fighters that have made million dollars women that's Clarissa, katie taylor you know has made a million dollars um see 100%. but i don't want to i don't want to i'm talking america and when it comes to okay. Clarissa, who's, who's made a million amanda serrano is the only other one and that was her fight with katie Okay, what it wasn't in oh, who promoted that? Was that Katie's promoter? Well, it was Katie's was promoter it was and Amanda had Jake Paul. Yeah, Daz, yeah, uh, Jake Paul. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And see, that's how that's every only one. single right, but that's how every female fighter should be fighting for that. You cannot yeah. sit here and tell me that Jake Paul comes along, a YouTuber, and shows you, boom, here's a million. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like right. it, it's pennies, it's pennies in, in today's society. We are not boxing in the nineties. A million dollars is not hard to get. Okay. No. Millions of dollars are circulating in the world. The money is there to be made. And yeah. it just, it, I think now from a business perspective, because you know, I'm an entrepreneur, I, you know, outside of boxing, after boxing, I became obsessed with entrepreneur. We're me and my husband are now home investors. We were property investors. We're working on our third property. And I also started my own small business. I have contracts in other countries where I have foreign shipments. You know, I think from a business uh, perspective in everything I do now, and yeah. when it comes to boxing, these females need to get somebody who's business savvy to take them to a whole nother level of, of income. Cause it's there, the money's there. Yeah. But you know, a closed mouth don't get fed. You sit there and say, um, I want 20,000 more. That ain't shit. Oh no. Oh no. That ain't nothing. It, it, oh, I, but I'm getting a quarter of a million. That ain't shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know, and, right. and get you an agent, get yourself on audition, start networking, get yourself on the daily show, get on today's show, do collaborations with YouTube, uh, uh, TikTokers and YouTubers and market, 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 market. But these yeah. girls, they think oh, I'm the biggest, the baddest, and that's how I'm going to be famous. No, 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 honey. No, 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 no honey. You got to go a different way. Now that there's the platform it. to use, we didn't have I know. That. Exactly. But now that exactly. there's this big platform of all these social media oh, networks, oh, you gosh. have to use them. There's no reason why you self-promotion no is huge. We didn't mm -hmm. have that freaking opportunity. They need to think outside of the box. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You think outside of the box because boxing ain't gonna do it. Just boxing ain't gonna pay the bills longevity. I'm talking about 20 years from now. Because right. like I said. I think long term now, you know, I don't yeah. think short term. You right. can be all it takes uh, uh all it takes is a nurse working 10 years in her career to make what might be your only purse that you make that dollar amount. And that's a shame. That shouldn't be that way. And no. today you have the platform, the promoters, the television. It shouldn't be that way. And whether or not women are going to fight for it and market for it and manage for it and endorse for it and network for it and net is not gonna happen. And yeah. I and I wish 
I had the mind that I have today back then when I was active and up there because yeah. it would have been a different ball game. What's happening this weekend? Who's going to be in town? What event is going to be there? Let me get my business cards. Let me get my pictures. Let me shake some hands. Let me yeah. smile. Let me wave. Let me put my face out there. Put my face out there. Put my face up. Next thing you yeah. know, McDonald's wants to do a commercial with me. Carl Jr. wants to do a commercial with me. You got to be like that. Yeah. Every single time your face is getting looked at, your stock is going up. And these these women, their stock is themselves. And I don't, they just stuck on, oh, my skills is going it's going to make me rich. My, yeah. No, sweetie, you're going to have to do a lot more outside of the ring to be yeah. rich or wealthy for, per se, wealthy in the sport. Absolutely. Yeah, it's I definitely not going to come like that. I just, uh, I just They should already know so that it's not going to work. Look at the past. When we didn't even have the shit that they have today, it yeah, takes more than that. All. Definitely takes yeah. more than that. It does. It does. There's some um, girls out there who have that opportunity, so hopefully they, they figure it out. Maybe. Yeah. Hopefully we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Yeah. Well, that kind of explains a little bit about how we feel about women's boxing today, but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. They gotta just get it. Get it. Get it. Um, get it. They gotta, they stop gotta, being shit on. Just do it. Um, yeah. Like, just do it. We tried to do it, but we didn't have the resources that you that there's available now. We just we did what we could. Yeah. Um, I I was a little bit. I had a little bit of Instagram but i didn't know how to use it i didn't know how to work it right i just didn't know and, and the, when we first were hit with social media a lot of us didn't i think know mine that. back then it was myspace and i didn't even have a myspace i didn't even have no myspace like we didn't even I was fighting like it was myspace and 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 myspace you know it was so new that a lot of people were scared of it like a lot of people were like anybody can see your pictures and contact you that's scary you know it was so yeah. new it's like how do we use this you know right. <laughs> now everybody knows how to use social media Everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's a fact yeah um, looking back though who i mean you already had kind of guess talked about some but tell us some of who your female role models were or people fighters that you looked up to I really liked um I really liked Melissa Hernandez. Um I just she just her swag and her confidence. Um she was very flashy and she was she was above like her league was above me. You know what I mean? Like I I'd like yeah. to say that I was about 8 years behind her. Um and so she was just somebody that I was like, wow, you know? But man, I'm having brain farts because <laughs> I know. Oh, Lucy. Oh, duh. Because Lucia Riker, she was just the one that I was like, <laughs> you know what I mean? She In was awe. my. Oh yeah. man, she was my like go-to when I would think of great female that I look up to. Wow, I want to be as tough as her wow she's she's amazing she's strong she's good and nice to watch her black and white videos when she was kickboxing and i just used yeah. to think she was just amazing you know strong so she was another one uh and that was it i didn't really i was i'm gonna be honest with you brooke there was barely any women you know and I know. they weren't they weren't televised so when i was coming up i used to only see the men and I felt like I only would, could choose from the men. It wasn't until I learned about other right. women. I had to learn and do research. So yeah. I never- I mean, really I always had... could ask any of the fighters, like who was your male role models or who did you look up exactly. to on the men's side? Exactly, but, yeah. Like I try to make it about women. I, I mean, right. there's always yeah, at least good. one you can think of from, from exactly. that, you know, did something. Back then. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, for um, sure, for sure. You did the CW show Capture. That was so cool. Tell us a little bit about that show and experience. Yeah. I'll expose what happened. We should have won. That, first off, it was the, I felt like television dumbed it down of how it really was because we stank. We were living outside for a month and a half. We were, I lost 30 pounds. We were, we had no food. 
um, except one small portion every day. And then we ran for four hours every single day. We were running in the woods. I had whole, like stab wounds from, I still have scars on my legs um, from the from the manzanita sticking my legs, running in the woods. It was horrible. I would never do it today. <laughs> oh, heck no. You couldn't pay me a quarter of a million to do it. You got to pay me a million dollars to do that again. But it was bad. And um, what was really frustrating, though, was th whenever I watch reality TV now, it's not the same because I know how producers can manipulate it. They would take snippets from an interview that I said two weeks before and use it for that moment. And it just... it. I'd be like, I didn't laugh during that part when that happened, but they used something from before. from before. So that's, that. yeah, that was really frustrating. But, but the worst part about it was me and my partner at the time were so good and we were so elusive. We would crawl because you could never stop moving. You always had to move. But that's what was scary is when you're crawling, somebody could be right there looking for you. The hunters could right. be looking for you. So, it, but it was just all wood. So you could be within five feet and you can't see them because that's how right. many woods there was. It's crazy. So me and him developed a strategy where we could we were sprawling on the floor, crawling. So we were still moving yeah. and hunters would run back and forth past us. They never realized we were there. And we got down uh, the red team, the ones who ended up uh, tagging us. It was so messed up because I had we had outran them. OK. And they stopped it and made us restart because the cameraman couldn't keep up. And I had to restart and rerun the whole thing versus these six foot guys down a straightaway path. Of course, they're gonna get they're me. You. And they were in and tagged out three times before. And we had never, we were the only team that had never been captured. We were never captured. And the only time we got captured, they voted for us to leave. But those the red team was voted to stay, voted to stay. And the it, the problem is we we didn't play politics, and you got to play politics on those reality shows because we we were allying with the green team, and the green team was the ones that won the show. But they were not. We we shouldn't have allied with them. We should have allied with somebody else. And it was just if it. And then they were getting the producers were getting frustrated. There was no action for that last hunt, we were being hunted for over two hours and that's how long the hunt should be. They started blocking the uh, map down, narrowing the map down to bring us all closer. And they would set your alarm off if you were outside of the boundaries. They were setting our alarm when we were in the boundary. Our producer, who's our friend to this day, was yelling on the radio saying, they're in the boundaries. Why are you setting their alarms? They're in the boundaries fighting for us because yeah. they saw they saw what was going on. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, two, the two guys, they were, they were big six foot three, handsome gay guys that they were, you know, pumping up on this show. They were great on TV. I mean, it's all, it's all, at the end of the day, it's all entertainment. And yeah. they were closing, they were closing down that map on purpose to see some action and wanted us to go. We were, we were competitive as heck, but yeah. we were not marketable. I, I, again, I wish I had the mind that I had today. Yeah. Cause I was careful about whether or not I cursed, careful about what I said. Cause you know, yeah. you're thinking about your parents and now I, yeah. mean, I don't give a damn shit. Right. Fuck this, I would've been going in. <laughs> right. I'll run your ass, I would've been pumped up. They would've loved that. Right. Cause everybody would wanna it. watch it. They, they wouldn't have closed that map down. They would have wanted to see me on the next episode. But it was a little bit of politics, a little bit of, uh, uh, of you know, TV, Hollywood. Right. Otherwise, all of it was 100% real. What happened, it was very fun. It was a great experience. It, it You know, it, I wish I did more with the platform that I had during that time. Right. But it, it ended up that the, the show didn't have the marketing budget because of a um a big fine that they had they ended up getting fined for not having sag do the show yeah it was just this big old thing where they their marketing budget was thrown out of the picture so they couldn't market the show the way they wanted to so not a lot of people we had almost a million views but not a lot of people like what they expected 
to have, right. they wanted, they wanted millions of views, you know, they, they couldn't do that because of the marketing budget. So they didn't get the, the, the marketing that we expected. And, but overall, it was just really a really cool opportunity. And I don't know if you knew this, but I did Sony commercial. I did Apple music release commercial with Crystal Morales. And I ended up doing um, a Nike commercial and, and I did a uh, Samsung and I did that. And I did a lot of little gigs where I'm in it yeah. for 30 seconds, 10 seconds. And, and it's, even though they were little, they were little things for the world. They were big things big for me things. because yeah. the experience that I, ex you know, it's like a once in a lifetime. Like yeah. I, I was on, I was on the Wayne Brady show. I made a deal with Wayne Brady. Like yeah. there's things that I'll be sitting in class and I'll tell my, my cl cl classmates sometimes I'll be like, Oh yeah, I did that. I will, I made a deal with Wayne Brady. And they'll be like, what? <laughs> like, no, like, you didn't. Nobody does that. Yeah. They're like, you're just full of these stories. Are they real? So it's funny. Cause now I'm actually going to work on my website and put all that on there and everything that I've done. And eventually how i want to utilize my my platform today is i'm really against bullying heavy against bullying because i was bullied and what happened yeah. to my nephew recently and i want to start doing motivational you know speeches out to universities and, and high schools and and i would just because i always try to think like what can i do to give back to boxing and do something with this amazing resume I that I have. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. I think of it all the time and I say, you know what? I've got the gift of gab. I need to utilize my gift of gab and I need to just start telling my story and start motivating these kids and focusing on one thing that I'm passionate about. And I'm passionate about shutting bullies up and me and you both know there ain't no boxer who's a bully because we're all, we've all been humbled. Yeah. All of us have been humbled. Yes. So, so it's just, have dealt with right and it's exactly and i hate it and i have two boys and i'm gonna cry the day one of them comes back that's being bullied you know so that's something that i want to work on next in this next chapter of my life when it comes to boxing yeah i like that um i've been thinking about that a lot too and i really would like to get into doing something like that it's just the same thing as always it's just like the you got to have the freaking connections and you got to yep. be able to and i'm just like it, i don't know if i have the time really to like really try to get the marketing out on it to do it but yeah i know a lot of the a lot of x fighters are doing that stuff i don't know maybe one of the, maybe we can collab on it sometime oh for sure in, in i think what you're doing now though you know everything I mean, this is like my know. way of trying to yeah like get it out there if I, it's just a matter of getting people to uh, bigger audience well, that uh -huh. will come with time. We both yes, know time. you, you develop a reputation though. You know yes. what I mean? And it's just, and I think with your knowledge, but all like, these stories, like, yeah, they are but, all, but, but you, one thing about you is you are, you pay attention. See, I lacked that my whole career. My dad was my eyes and my ears. I was a puppet. Uh, he was the one that knew every single boxer, everything about him, everything about, and you have what he has and you need yeah. that to do what you're doing today. Like I would yeah. never be able to sit here and do what you're doing because I never, I never had that. I never, you know, I just never had that. It's just something yeah. that's why, that's why I never really pursued commentating. Cause it's like, you got to know everything about every fighter, every fight. You can't miss one. Yeah. See, I don't have, I lasted with my husband about that all the time because I don't watch boxing like I used to. Oh, you got it. You got to get back doing that. Especially. I mean, I watch the big fights. Yeah. yeah. But that's like the extent of it. Like I don't yeah. sit and watch all the undercards anymore. Like no, I don't. Yeah, me neither. I like the fights that I want to watch. I watch that fight and that's yeah. it. Like yeah. I don't want, I used to watch boxing all the time, like Tuesday night yeah. fights, Friday night fights, like Saturday. Me too. Like we were, we were always watching because it was always somebody we knew. <laughs> yes. Like we but really now, did. like people will ask me a stuff about like up and coming fighters, male, even male fighter, and I'm like, yeah. I don't know, I don't even know who that is. Like yep. we're the same. 
Um, so yeah, but my husband knows a lot of them still, but that's just because he reads on it more. Like, I don't even like really look at the stuff anymore, but yeah, I was like, man, I really got to like freshen up on my like knowledge of like some of this stuff today because right. yeah. doing this podcast and I'm act like, I don't, if somebody's going to ask me a question one day, I'm going to be like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna have to ask me about somebody from the past because if there's anything past like my time, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, well, you I know just, what? So I'll leave I don't. Alone. I mean, I'm just being honest. Um, but yeah, there's gonna come a day where I'm asked a question about somebody I have no clue what they're talking about. I can wing it though. I can wing it. Right. <laughs> I, can, I can. Yeah, I know them. Like, matter of fact, let's pull this up right now. Let's pull up the archives. <laughs> uh, but speaking of today's fighters, is there any fighters, um, any female fighters that you like um, in today's era or that you like that you're following or you are impressed by? You know, I'm a big fan of um, of uh, Clarissa Shields, of course, and um, Sinise Estrada and uh, Adelila Ruiz. And then there's D, who just turned pro. I'm gonna follow her for sure. Uh, D, she's D Morgan. She's a, uh, I think she's now one and zero. But I've have I have a history with, you know, Cobra and Sinise Estrada and Sinise. She's like my daughter in the. She doesn't know it, but she's like my daughter in the sport. She's my boxing daughter because I remember when I was pro and I was ten and zero. And I was at the little desert showdown out in the desert and she was little girl and her, her little teammate, little boy. And they were like, so excited to see me because I yeah. was pro and, and she was just like, can I take a picture with you? And she's so cute and little and young. And she just, and then eventually she turned pro. And I remember I was like, Oh, she should have went to the Olympics. And I was mad at her and I was telling her you should go to the Olympics, but she wanted to go pro. She didn't, have a, a olympic on her it wasn't a goal of hers and that's okay but i sparred with her and she was so elusive but she was always smaller than me so i never tried to tear her ass up you know i yeah. just work i'd work with her but i just I, I got to feel her and i i could usually get a good idea of a fighter whether they're big or small of how good they are when i spar them and i felt yeah. her I, I knew she was going to be a champion long before she became a champion and now she is a champion and she's living that out. And I love seeing that. I admire her every, I always talk about her. I always tell people she's, she's bad. Look at the way she moves. You know, she gets right. excited to watch boxing again. And then same, same thing with Ruiz at Alila. And that's because of our history, our story. And I, that same little girl that I heard crying after our fight, I see that and it gives me so much, you know, passion behind watching her and what she does and then yeah. Dee Morgan she was always looked up to me and I'd always tear her butt up in sport because she was a bull she was stubborn and kept coming and she kept at it man she has the heart of a lion and she ended up becoming great in the, in the amateurs after me you know after yeah so and now she turned pro and she's tough and I always knew she was tough. I will say she surprised me because I was sparring her when she was kind of new. You know, yeah. I was sparring her when she got a couple of years in and she was tough, but she wasn't experienced and poised. So right. now she's a whole different caliber of a fighter. And so I, it's just so interesting to watch what she's becoming, knowing, oh, wow, she was tough. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, yeah. I felt her. I felt her um, capabilities back then. So... Yeah, you just uh, knew. Yeah, yeah, you just know, and and I just knew, and I love watching what I know can happen. Like, yeah, like you know, like it's she like stick with this, she could, she's gonna be something. It's yeah. like, yeah, told you, see, see what happens when you put trust in this in the process. You know, it's one of those things. Trust gotcha. the process. Yeah, totally. You um. We talked about this before, so I was, you are being inducted into the International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame this mm -hmm. October, class of 2023. I'm class of 2022, so you're right behind me. Um, I'm super excited for you. 
Um, I worked with Sue on um, some things with the inductions this year. Um, she invited me back as a special guest this year for the anniversary. So I will be there awesome. um, cheering you on. It's going to be awesome. But I can still remember it was surreal. Like, I don't, the whole night was like a blur to me. Like, it, didn't even happen. it went so fast. But, so I'm excited about this year having like the pre. A different pre perspective. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I just still can remember getting the phone call that I got from oh. Sue telling me that I was being inducted. And, and for the first time, I was kind of like at a loss for words, you know, in that in that moment. Um, so tell me about your phone call and, how, you know, how that was and what this means to you being inducted into the Hall of Fame. Really, really good question. I didn't get a phone call. I woke up oh. to to being tagged um, on an article on Facebook. And when I saw it. I didn't believe it. I was like, wait, are they, they're just inviting me like, or they just tag me so I could put, repost it. Or so something. you could read it, right? Right. And so I just skimmed through it. And then I want to say like two hours later, it was like, likes this, congratulations and this and that. And I was like, wait a minute, what? And then I was like, oh. and, and Brooke, I cried like a baby. But the reason why I cried it wasn't so much of like, I'm being inducted into the, the hall of fame. I cried because I knew that this was it. I yeah. knew that, that this was my last chapter. That's how I felt. And I, I, I took it in and I told, and I told my husband, I was crying, telling my husband, like, I knew this day would come, but I didn't know when this day would come. Yeah. So when it, when it came, I cried so hard because when you look at your boxing career, you think of it as chapters and chapters and stories and stories. Yeah. And and then, you know, being inducted into the Hall of Fame is like the last chapter. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm I a mom, totally dude. Concerned. I cry over everything. I cry. I know. I know. You're freaking making me start to freaking cry. I'm um, so sorry. But, but yes, uh, geez, I understand that 100% because for me, my yeah. ending goal. And I've always told people this my entire career, other than being a champion, a WBC champion, the only other goal I ever had was leaving a print in boxing, yeah, like too. feeling like I was a part of history in boxing yeah. and people yeah. to remember me yeah. to like leave that mark. Oh, they will. It, How could they not? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like to, make, to make the hall of fame to me, that was my ending goal. Like I've always said, my ending goal is to be in the hall of fame, because if I know if I make the hall of fame, I had an impact on the sport. Yep. So yep. Me too, yeah. that was like the icing on the cake for me. So yeah. I a hundred percent, like as soon as you started saying that, I'm like, I know exactly what she's talking about, yeah. well, but, but yeah. it's, it's a surreal, sad moment. Yeah. I mean, it's a good yeah. moment, but yet at the same time, it's like a sad moment. Cause like, that's really the end. Yeah, yeah. It's not the end, but it's you know what I mean. Like that's that's there really isn't much else after that. Right, exactly. And I was so shocked and I was so and I did the math. I was like, when did I retire? I was like, wow, it's been six years since I couldn't believe it's been like almost seven years since I've and it just time flies. And yeah. you know, I'm turning thirty six, I'm getting up there and I just all that hard work, I look back at everything and like, just when you think it was good it, and it's become great, you know? Yeah. And I, I just, I cried and then I, I called my dad and I cried again, like a baby. And I said, dad, we did it. Cause you know, my dad's always been my yeah. teammate, my corner. And I told my dad, I was like, dad, I was like, I'm crying so much dad because this is another chapter and let's go and enjoy this day and yeah. let's enjoy this chapter that we get to celebrate our, you know, like relationship in the ring as well as father, daughter. And then my, my last big fight, you know, and my, my hoorah in the sport, you know, and another, another reason to have that adrenaline going to celebrate you as a boxer. Yeah. And it is a big deal. It is a great deal. And yeah. I told him all that and he, he started crying too. And he was just like, 
he he just was like, I'm so proud of you, mama. Here's what he'd say. He's like, I'm yeah. so proud of you, mama. You know, I'm so proud of you, mama. That's all he kept saying. And, yeah. and he's just like, they they saw the same little champion that I saw and and you you were adored and years and he he just saying all this stuff and I just was like wow you know you I was like wow. a phone call after though like she never called you no no uh uh I don't think she so you only number. know because of the articles <laughs> what the yeah <laughs> I saw the article and I was like that's me that's my face <laughs> Like wow, people are telling me. Oh my me gosh, I can't me. believe that I'm gonna have to freaking text Sue and be like, Sue. <laughs> I think she just doesn't have my number. I I changed my number. I had changed. I used to change my number so often. She probably thought I ignored her text or something. But I don't. She don't. She texting the wrong person. Probably. I don't know. I but, will have to talk to Sue and see if that's why. Maybe she just doesn't have your number. Um, but you are going right. Oh, of course. Are you kidding me? Our rooms are booked, girl. We got our plane flight booked. I'm still debating if I'm taking the kids because I'm like, man, I think I'm just going to go. <laughs> Enjoy. We did not take the kids. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I'm going to. Actually, I asked because we had planned okay. on taking them. Okay. Um, but she said they don't really want kids at the ceremony. I just figured. because. They don't, you know, they if they cry. Interruption. Yeah. 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 Um, I figure. She's like, we've never had any here. People usually don't even add. They just don't even bring them. And I said, well, I mean, I don't really have anybody to watch mine. We ended up leaving ours with my sister-in-law, my brother's, or my husband, Chris's brother, his wife, but they have five kids of their own. And so wow. I let my, well, my oldest one's almost 20. So she's on her own, but she's 19. But the other two, I mean my one-year-old and she's got kids all the way from nine down to one wow so and they kept them and we but she was like never again but we're going again this year and he's like my husband says that they're gonna he's gonna tell them that they got to watch them again and I'm, <laughs> i don't know how that's gonna go but Medi, my she's my daughter's old enough she's 11 so she don't really need she, any oh that's good advice. she'll help yeah Besides, you know and but then my son but now he'll be two you know then so i mean be a little bit easier and yeah. I don't know. we'll see what happens but yeah yeah, yeah we'll be there i got we don't have work yet, but we got room we're having it we're probably going to have to fly in a babysitter to come watch our kids because well, we live in texas where all of our close friends and families out back home in cali so i was like you know what let's just fly family that's not going or somebody that's not going out here to, to watch the kids yeah. for the weekend yeah yeah that's probably what we're yeah. doing I don't know. I have to figure that out. Yeah. But I'm super excited to see you. Thank you. Me too. I'm excited yeah. to see a lot of boxing boxing heads. Oh my god, it's gonna be so forever. Crazy. It's gonna yeah. be so crazy. Yeah. I'm excited. Um, tell everybody where they can follow you on social media that they may not already know. Okay. Um, Facebook, you could just look up Cleisha West. And I have a fan page that I love using because it's just easier to keep track of comments and messages and such. And then on Instagram, under my married name, Cleisha West Hoke. And um, I have a TikTok. Not a lot of people know about it. <laughs> but I have, I have a TikTok where I do mom life videos. And that's under my business. Elasian I'm pretty beauty. sure I'm following you on TikTok. You did. I yeah, I don't I don't advertise that I have it because I post like mom videos and silly videos. Yeah, and I'm like, I'm pretty sure I already have you on TikTok. Right, yeah, I do I do have that. And then I have a I'm gonna be coming up with a KalishaWest.com, so that'll be coming soon. Should should be in about two more months, but otherwise, yeah. Otherwise it, those are my Instagram. I very active on Instagram. And uh, yeah, TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. Mom, I'm life. an older TikToker. <laughs> I jumped on the bandwagon a little late, but I'm on there. <laughs> is there uh, is there anyone that you want to shout out or give thanks to or anything that you would like to say to anyone? I want to give thanks to you. Thank you for having me on the show. Oh, um, I appreciate that. 
Thank, thanks for just being awesome too with my schedule, knowing how crazy it was in the beginning. And awkward. I get it. Yeah, with college, so easy to work with. Yeah, and thank you to anyone out there who's still a fan because I sometimes get emails of people from other countries asking for my autograph, and I'm like, I've been retired six. <laughs> That's another reason why I need to get my website up because people do still reach out asking for that. Um, and so I've had loyal fans for so long. Thanks to all of them for continuing to follow what I do next. And I mean, everyone else is out there supporting women's boxing and, and you know what I mean? It's like, you're awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. Um, I will. Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you want to talk about? I know I kept you for hours and hours. We covered everything. I think <laughs> Um, D Garcia chimes in, says, congratulations, ladies. Thank you so much, D um, Garcia, for joining us. And he said, thank happy you. late Mother's Day. Ah, uh, thank you. I appreciate, appreciate you. I appreciate greatest everybody for tuning in. Title. That is my greatest title, though, becoming a mom. I love my boys. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, we kind of briefly talked about the kids and the, uh, the boxing and stuff like that. And um, yeah. you are in Texas now, though. I am, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm in the you're not in Cal anymore. You're in Texas. You're going to school. You're busy being a mom, going to school. Has Hunter made it there now, at least permanently? Yes, girl. Okay. Yes. Uh, he's on reserve instead of active. So he's out. He's done and he's back and he's helping me with the kids because it was impossible to do a nursing program with two little ones. It was just impossible. It's unrealistic. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how you did how you did that. Well, I sort of didn't do it. I, my first, my first three exams, I failed miserably, and I had to climb out of that. And I finished the semester with an A, with two A's, a B, and then one class that I ended up saying, you know what, I'm gonna take it over the summer. And I got out of it early because I knew I had dropped it early, and I said, I'm just gonna do this in the summer. I'm not gonna try to go all the way because it's just it was too hard. It was too much. But I, my grades shot up as soon as he came back, and I had hope. It was hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's hard. I mean, school is hard, period. But let alone with two yeah. little kids, um, your husband not there, no help, trying to do school, yeah, study, yeah. concentrate, no sleep, being interrupted. It's a nursing program. I got my degree really online hard. with yeah. after I, after the military because I had my daughter, and I was like, "There's no mm. way I can class. Like, there's no way." Yeah. Like. Yeah. And even and I have to go to struggle. Right. I did my whole associates um, pretty much online. I only took two classes in person, but the but the uh, nursing program that I'm in is a traditional. So it requires that I go in. I was in four days a week going to clinicals, labs, um, you know, doing injections and everything. You're doing nursing yeah. on hands, but it's also that they're just nursing programs are just so hard. I don't know why they make it this hard. I mean, I do, but I don't. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, oh, it's crazy. Well, how much longer I'm do you have? I still have a year and a half. I'm still a long ways. Yeah, I know. I'm it. in the very beginning. You I'm got in it, the very though. beginning. Ugh, well, now that you crazy. got help, though, it, it'll be a lot easier. Yes, for sure. For sure. Definitely. Well, yeah. tell Hunter and everybody that I said hello. Looking forward to seeing I you will. all the inductions. Thanks again Definitely. so much for coming on the show. I was super excited to have you. Obviously, oh, let's you. see what time is it. Almost, it's almost eleven. So, okay, holy it cow! Is, it's so, it got late quick. We've been on for three and a half hours. I think this is my, we made a record. I think this is my longest show. <laughs> You're with the gift of gab, girl. We set a new record. We set a new record. Ah, <laughs> uh, all right, uh, Thanks again for having me. Yes, thank you. I will see you uh, soon. All right, I'll see you this. October. Yes, this October, just a few months away. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Have a great night, champ. Thanks. You too. Bye. All right. Bye. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking with me. If you're still here, I appreciate you so, so much. I know that was a very long show tonight, um, but Kalisha and I haven't really talked a ton lately, so we had a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, that's my girl, like I said at the beginning, I love her to death. Um, we're very similar. So that was just a very easy interview. Um, and she she does love to talk. So it made it, it made it easy for me. But I appreciate you again. Thank you for coming. I hope you guys enjoyed the show. Um, I hope we got all of your questions answered. I want to thank everyone for commenting 
and interacting with us, asking questions. Thanks for coming um, and taking the time to watch the show with us today. There is, um, there is, make sure, I don't know, there is, but make sure that you guys are liking, subscribing, and sharing the episodes so we can grow our audience. Um, I want to get these stories out to people all over the world. Um, every one of these stories is so unique and so different, and all of them have something that people can learn from. Um, I try to ask questions to get them to like go into detail about different things about the sport and just life in general, even. Um, but they can help all of our stories can help so many other people. So please make sure you're subscribing, sharing these out and, and telling people about it so we can grow our audience here. Okay. Um, definitely make sure that you're joining in every Tuesday night here with me, Brooke, AKA no mercy every Tuesday night at 8 30 PM Eastern standard time. Make sure you guys are following me on my social media pages to see who's going to be on the show each week. Um, my Facebook, I have Brooke, no mercy, Deardorf Millbrook. And of course, uh, my podcast page, no punches pulled with no mercy. And actually it's the same, those two pages on all my social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Uh, follow both pages. You can always see who's coming up on the next week's show. Um, and a, and a brief description. So you guys know what to look forward to every week. And then if you see those, Share them for me. Share them out for other people so other people can see it and join us too. All right. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me tonight. I appreciate every one of you for being here. I will see you all again, same place, same time next Tuesday, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with your next episode on No Punches Pulled with me, No Mercy. But until then, remember, punch hard because nothing else matters. Good night.